Good evening everyone and welcome to this special Shenmue Dojo stream of Shenmue 2. Um, before we get sort of cracking into what we're going to be doing today, I'd like to introduce my do uh, fellow Dojo co-owner, James. Hello, how is everyone doing? And my name is Matt. Um, we're going to be playing through some bits of Shenmue 2 today, but not only that, I'm going to be giving away some bits and pieces tonight as well. So we luckily have four... Yes, I said four Steam keys to give away for Shenmue 1 and 2 on PC. That's the Steam keys. And I also have one of these Ryo Hazuki t-shirts. It's extra large from Sega Shop, which I'll be giving away through the stream tonight. We should be live for about two-ish hours, see how we get on. And um, we're also going to sit down, have a chat about Shenmue, the, the sort of the how the franchise is going forward, talk about the anime and other bits and pieces as we carry on through the evening. So get involved in the chat, guys. It's going to be a nice, chilled-out sort of stream. And yet, sit back, relax, and let's crack on. How's everyone doing? We've got Hal, where, uh, Hal was here uh, in Twitch. Solid Mans, Carzal, uh, all on Twitch. Welcome, guys. And Veritas on YouTube at the moment, and Ziggy Stardust, of course. Thanks for joining us on your Saturday evenings, slash nights, wherever you're located, I suppose. Could be morning. Could be morning. <laughs> well, probably like Australia or something. Yeah. <laughs> One of you from. Uh, we've already got a question in the chat. Will, will there be Shenmue 4 game for the PS5? Wondering what's going to happen or not. Well, solid man, I can say that if you listen to our interview with Cedric Biscay that we did um, released on Christmas Day actually um, Cedric actually talks a little bit about Shenmue 4 and the state of the project um, I don't I don't want to spoil it but let's just say things have been going on behind the scenes and it's nothing that's not publicly available or anything it, you know, it's, in, it's in the interview go and have a listen to it but we're in a good place I'll just pop it in the chat there. So that's the one, guys, that he's, uh, Matt's talking about there, the Cedric Biscay interview. Uh, Matt did a great interview with uh, Cedric there. And uh, like I say, you don't want to spoil it, but um, there's some good Shenmue 4 news, or, or news regarding Shenmue 4, that uh, himself and uh, Cedric talk about. It must Let's listen. And also, obviously, it's available on, because we've, we've kind of like set up a podcast, <laughs> Shenmue Dojo Show, it's called. And if you go on to wherever you get your podcast from, it should be available. So I know, I know definitely for sure it's on Spotify, and um, I've got it myself on um, Apple Podcasts. So I'll show you actually while I'm talking about it. So basically, if you just search for Shemi Dojo Show um, on, you can see that on Apple Podcasts. If you've got an, an Apple phone, we pop up there, and you can listen to. All of the interviews that Matt's done and uh, the ongoing Shemi Dojo show that we're, we're trying to record an episode a month, aren't we? Yeah, we're trying to sort of do a, do a podcast a month. Um, there'll be interviews sort of kicking around in between as well. We've got a few lined up. I've got a few I'm working on. So there's going to be a lot of sort of content coming from us in the next sort of month, two months, which is really exciting news, actually. We've got some good stuff coming forward. So I'll turn my mic down to a tiny bit loud. One day, Konangai. Actually, my first question to chat is: Do I go Japanese voices or do I go English? What do we reckon? I forgot it was even set on Japanese. Actually, to be fair, is that from last time you played? Yeah, it is. It's um, where I left it, I suppose. Lovely. The chat don't. Uh, there we go. First one in always Japanese. Always Japanese. Yeah, why not, eh? To be honest, I don't play it enough in Japanese. I've, uh, I always tend to go for the English voices just because it's, it's what I've always been used to, but I've I been to uh, play it a bit more in Japanese. Especially while I'm trying to learn the language. Would help, I suppose. You can do what uh, Ryan did and buy the fully Japanese with no with Japanese subs and try and learn it that way. 
Don't know someone. Do you know you know show? Just make it so that you could see the show when I was showing it on the phone. One day to you, but so Sagasti must massive delay on YouTube. One day, Nara, Achida de Gozai must. Well, while there is on my end, I think it's because I paused it. Ah, uh, right. Arigatou yeah, it looks, looks like you can see it, so that's good news. But yeah, yeah, like I say, I know Ryan, he's, he, he basically forced himself to play the game in Japanese, with Japanese subtitles, and uh, while he was he was learning the language, he, well, he, he said that it, it basically helped him, and uh, you know, forced him to immerse himself in... ウェルカムよこそ香港へ面白いとこあんねしようかこれ一人かよ止まれてもすいませんよえ、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃん
Yes, yes we do. Although I'm not going to do it today, because A, it takes too long, and B, I've got a save with a bunch of capsules and stuff on it, so I'll just flog a load of those things off. And... Okay. Oh, we've got Retro Godfather in. Good evening to you. I think I've seen you on YouTube, actually. Um, dipping in and out of some of our interviews, so thank you for taking the time to listen to those. That's where I recognise the name from. You're right. Getting the notification saying that someone's responded to you. Uh, Ryan Patron, Patron, yeah. Part three videos. Thank you for the video. So nice one, uh, Retro Godfather. Right side of life is just popped in as well. Hello as well. How is how's it going? Ah, Yosha, so gonna get ya. Nichan, Nippon Jin, daro. Namae wa. Good, good, good. Hazuki Ryo da. Are you right side of life? Are you a old school Shenmue fan? Are you a new school Shenmue fan? When did you when did you find the series? I'm interested to know actually who is part of the actual Pedro forums. Oh, he says that the game audio is a bit louder than we are. I will sort that out. Put my mic up and I'll whack the game audio down in a second. I'll get through this here. It's also because I mean my I can sort my mic out on my end quite easily because I'm running through Streamlabs, but scale I've got through Discord to pop into here into the stream. So he's controlled by he's controlled by um, oh wasn't even looking. Whoops. Um, he, got a, I got my arse handed to me. There you go. Um, Hold says, "Hey, do you guys think there will be a Shemu series with the Wow someday and tell a story?" I'm thinking, you know, they, they could do like a Shemu Zero, but I'm, I'm thinking you'll see that kind of stuff hopefully in the anime series. Uh, I know we've spoken about this before, Matt, but I'd like to see when they actually bring out this anime series. There's more than just the, the straightforward one-to-one -one Shenmue story that we, we already know and love. Uh, hopefully, you know, it'd be nice if they, if they went back before, you know, Ryo returns home and his father's being killed by Landy. Hopefully there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, because they could introduce the characters uh, differently to how they were introduced to us in the games, because they've got the freedom to kind of write what they want as long as they retell Shenmue's story. Uh, story beats at some point, you can, uh, I think you could, you could do some extra things as well, like, you know, show Ryo as a child, um, how his relationship with his father was before all this stuff unfolded, so that would be nice to see if he, you know, uh, could have a, a nice introduction like that. Right side of I had it on a, had it on your coffee table for weeks, didn't know what it was, and then all of a sudden picked it up in your dream class and now you're here. I think that's what with people who picked up Shenmue and enjoyed it, I think it's it's that thing, isn't it? It, it? it hits you like an anvil of how different it was at the time, how daring it was, and also how I think progressive it was for gaming as a whole. It was it was worlds apart considering the time you know, 1999, 2000. It, it's a, it was a massive leap forward. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly right. There was nothing. There was nothing like it, and that's that's. I think part of the reason why it was so popular. Well, with us anyway. Obviously, I know wider may not have done as well as people would have hoped. But the first game sold a million copies, which isn't exactly. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not to be sniffed at. So you had it on your coffee table for weeks. Does that mean you you, you bought the game and you just sat up there and? Okay. Des, yeah, it's crazy. Fourteen yeah. and that game blew. Yeah, we. I was a similar age when I picked it up. Oh, wrong bloody button. Say the the allure of Shenmue just sitting there on your, your table. <laughs> oh yeah, like just this disc only version. Okay. Yeah, well there you go. As soon as you put it in the Dreamcast, I don't know if you like us, but you know, it changed your life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it did because. Through Shenmue, I've met people who I wouldn't have met before. Um, Travelled to Monaco, as is James. So it's, uh, got, um, Strictly Sega Europe on YouTube. Hello, just what I needed to watch. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Just out of interest, guys, is the volume for the audio okay now for the game? 
Well, I have turned it down, but I can always fiddle with it a bit more in game. Just let me know. Better. Brilliant. Thank you. If it, if it's still a bit off, just just shout me, and I'll quite happily just swap her around. It's just yeah. Oh. Cool, cool. So Retro Bugbug says, I fell in love with the series as soon as I started playing the first Shemu way back when it first came out. My mind was truly blown and never experienced anything like it to this day. Yeah, we share the same sentiments, man. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's... You know, I think... I, there's, there is nothing like Shemu. It, honestly, there's... Uh, apart from its sequels, obviously. But, you know, it's... It's it's such a... it's It literally is a genre on its own. I know... No one's really too combat that free as a genre before, you know, since Shemu that Yu Suzuki coined the series, but it, it, it does stand on its own really as its own sort of genre. It, you know, it, there's elements of certain <laughs> things in other games, you know, like obviously the arcade and Yakuza. But, it's, it's, it's a you, you've got to if you invest your time into it and you do fall in love with it, like, obviously so you'll have, you know, it just takes over your life, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it, it has, it has for us too, hasn't it? Um, yeah. Strictly say Europe stands more conversations to show new random people in Cyberpunk and it's 20 years later. And I think that's symptomatic really? of how that's much, true. I think it's how much of it was pushing the envelope. It, you know, it, it yeah. did, it just it changed gaming. I know obviously things have moved on times have moved on etc and the, the formula has been perfected and changed but you look back i mean even the, the, even cd project red looked looked at user zuki for inspiration and very you know, they're very respectable on social media and what he what he pioneered at the end of the day so it, it this yeah it, it's, it's, it, the fact that shenmue inspired what we now see in modern gaming are quite modern trends it, it's mind-blowing 20 years on i think and, and just watching my Uji play it earlier um, in the, the Guilin section and you know just all that di dialogue with Shenhua at the end of the game you know the, just that, that one little section like that two hour section of the game it's got an ungodly amount of dialogue really and uh, there's a lot of stuff there that you don't even hear probably the first time you play you know when they get to the end of the attack and it moves on that conversation option that you had, you know, kind of lost over next time you play. And just thinking about the experience as a whole, really, the amount of dialogue that there is in the game that you can chat to someone and then, you know, run around, come back to them, chat to them again, and they've got a different response. And, you know, sometimes you can speak to them three, four times, and they, they always say a different thing. It's, uh, you know, there's nothing quite like that. Like, even Yakuza can't do that. You, you know, these sort of games that quite on point try and, you know, spiritual success to Shenmue. Uh, you know, there's a lot of like, just text in Yakuza where, you know, Shenmue really had full, fully voiced characters. And, you know, each character is you know, quadruple the amount of dialogue than you'd expect them to have anyway, just from the various responses that they gave you every time you speak to them. And, and, oh, Dad's saying in, in chat, obviously, started quick time events and new games. Yeah, very much. I think it popularized QTEs, definitely. Um, there, was it Dragon's Lair used them before? Is that. I think so, yeah. I mean, obviously, these, these are elements of QTE. And, games probably before Dragon's Lair maybe, I, I, I'm not 100% on that, but like you say, when someone thinks of QTE now, be really related to Shenmue, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. Like you say, it pop popularised popularized QTEs. And Solid Man in there, just saying, hoping the series has kept going, and it, I'm glad it came back with Shenmue 3. Yeah, and I think, obviously Shenmue 3 is his own game and, and the rest of it, but the fact that it's come back with Shenmue 3 and the fans help bring it back, that Kickstarter announcement 2015, which I still get chills about to this day, um, it, it's amazing. And just uh, another point on the QT side of things, I don't think any of the games so, actually utilise them as that. well as Shenmue does. Um, <laughs> the cinematography of the cutscenes that are playing as you you're responding with the QTEs, you know. There's probably maybe games, certain games like Heavy Rain, 
that you know mm. those sort of games have got a lot of uh, heavy QT uh, usage. Those are probably the only games that warrant you know QT being a, a, a good feature of those sort of games. A lot of them don't really utilize them that well, really. Uh, Did you get your kickstart in the wall chat? I've got everything now. Yeah, I've got, I've got everything as well. You can see um, <laughs> Capsule Toy box set thing here. This was like one of the last things to arrive with the art loop and the soundtrack. I've had that for a couple of weeks now. And for those who are interested actually, we, we recorded a podcast last night which um, will be edited down talking about the Kickstarter, the rewards, the good, the bad and everything in between. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that, it should be out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it was an enjoyable, an enjoyable conversation. We um, we went through the whole Kickstarter page and sort of related it to you know 2021 now and just see now that all the rewards have actually been produced and sent out how the Kickstarter page that they were touting those sort of rewards back five years ago and now we've re received them all, how they actually compare. So I thought that was quite interesting going through the Kickstarter and just seeing like what we didn't know we were going to get until, you know, obviously now we've got them and we can say whether, you know, they made good things, produce good items, and, uh, all in all, spoilers, they did. <laughs> I'm pretty much happy with everything I've received. Uh, Retro Godfather says he hasn't opened his art book. I we'll haven't either. Get a second one. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, whether or not to open the seal on the things, because they're such nice items. But I, I did want to have a look in the art book, to be honest, and curiosity got the better of me, even though he did send us obviously the PDF, and uh, you could read through the art book anyway a few months back whenever they sent out those PDF files. But just holding the book in person. Fact, I got it. I haven't really got it to, um, to grab on hand to show off, but such a nice booth, just like a nice coffee table, pod, cover, it, you know, they've really done a nice job with the office. I think with the rewards in general, I know it's taken them a long time to, to get them out, and that's something we talk about in the podcast actually but the stuff that we got I think it was of an excellent quality overall um, I'm, I'm gen I was genuinely impressed with what we got I'll catch up with one more minute and then save it just in case anything goes completely wrong yeah there's quite a lot of people selling them on eBay um, so I mean if you do happen to score an extra art book for a decent price then yeah get the way one it's not a bad shout is it and open it up and you know, get it all greasy. <laughs> Keep one sealed and you zoom in on the... Just a warning for everybody, guys. That's what you want. Yeah. I'm like right side of the says he says he might he might keep them in the original box in case it gets valuable. It just depends what kind of um, eclectic you are. If you want to hold on to stuff and um, keep them nice for, for years to come, and you know. Obviously, things are going to increase in value because they're going to be harder to get because the Kickstarter's finished and those rewards you can't get anymore. And mm. The rewards that people are selling on eBay, people are buying them for their own collections because they missed out. So, these sort of items are going to get rarer and the value is going to increase. It just depends what kind of collector you are. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right. And it's, I think, given the, given the quality of the product, given that obviously it's people sell them on all the rest. I think that now immediately there's going to be a drive on the prices for these things but I think there'll be a lull eventually so I mean it depends if you want to hold your nerve you're desperate to get one now now or not really um I feel oh, like... Retro Godfather says he's currently bidding on one ah, 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 good lad I got um so don't, I, don't I, bring I got, attention to it I got a second sure kickstarter t-shirt and actually thanks to thanks to James last night I got one of the slacker backer ones which I'm really pleased about. I cropped up, yeah. Yeah, so I grabbed I up that. I was up to like, I was, I was still working on stuff at like 3 a.m. And uh, I just happened, just as I got in bed, I always have a quick check of eBay and stuff. And I noticed it. So I'm glad I can tell you that. Um, is it worrying that it's now 13 quid brand new, which is cheap and shed me one and two? <sighs> I mean, the game is, is over a year, a year old, so I can see what you're saying with it. Um, I mean, I, Cedric's quite honest in, in, in the interview he said with me that 
he, he really didn't sell probably as well as they hoped it would have done. He didn't get any numbers on it. Um, but in saying that, um, it re on Steam in November, it, it was the, in the top 20 highest revenue for new releases. Considering it was on sale at the time as well, it was really, really impressive. Um, so uh, it's a mixed bag, I think, is, is the honest answer. I, I'd love to it to sold a million copies and we'd have been sat here probably thinking Shenmue 4 is imminent. Um, we, we don't obviously don't know what's going to happen now, but um, despite... it's interesting. But how much revenue do you think they're making on sales now? So, say if it sold, you know, now it's 13 quid, people are more likely to take a pop on it, aren't they? Take a chance on it than they were when it first came up for 50 quid. You know, people that have been on the fence or not not diehard fans like us, if they're making a you know, they say, Oh, Shemu 3, we've got nothing to play with the lockdown. You know, I've heard good things about Shemu 1 and 2. I mean, how much is Shemu 1 and 2? Let me have a look uh, on Amazon. Just so everybody's uh, so aware. Shemu 1 and 2 is 20 quid, yeah. apparently. Okay, so it's not too different. Just so, just so, so everybody... basically, you can get Shemu 1, 2, and 3 for the PS4 from Amazon, Prime Delivered or whatever, for 35 quid. So that's obviously that's like 15 quid cheaper than Shemu 3 was when it was released just over a year ago. So, I mean, there's definitely an incentive for, for people that, you know, are in this, this new lockdown and have got nothing to play, perhaps. They might take a chance at Shemu right, and get the series. I mean, it's, it's, it's all. I think as long as we can get the game in people's hands, even at 13 quid, I, I don't think there's too much of a problem there because the, the sales that they were probably looking at originally was going to be as soon as, as it was released to see what kind of response the game got. And obviously, you, you know, Cedric cryptically said that it hadn't sold as well as we were hoping. So now I just think as, as many people as we can get to get the game, so at 13 quid I think there's, there's a high chance, especially if we promote that, uh, if people pick it up for that cheap and uh, get everyone in the same sort of position as we are. And then when Shemu 4 is a thing, hopefully the initial sales of Shemu 4 are better because, you know, there's a lot more people waiting for it. Yeah, I think it's, it could be a slow burn. I mean, you look at games that pop up on Steam, but Among Us, I know it's now massively popular, but actually that game was, was dying a death. And then people picked it up on Twitch and it got quite big. Now, I don't, I'm not suggesting that Shenmue would go down that route or not, but it's not to say that it, you know, it couldn't get more popular. People you know, take a risk on a game at 13 quid because it's small change in game terms, really. Um, just as a note for everybody, um, just for, sorry, James, just as a note, I've got the first Steam key up as a competition. You need to enter exclamation mark raffle to enter. I, I've seen Champion uh, Leak already made an entry. So get get involved guys there's four of them oh retro godfather little complete edition good man complete edition, nice. good work hey chow how's it going just seen you in there hey chow how you doing man oh, i'm looking forward to that complete edition you know um we just spoke about that last night as well the mm. some of those items are really nice i think okay the, the replica sword of the seven stars is like it's quite an unusual Shemu item to uh, just maybe thrown at us. We're enjoying your dinner, man. But yeah, and, and again, going back to the thing with the 13 quid for Shemu 3, I think if people buy into it, say the anime releases sometime this year or whatever, you don't actually know the date. People get into the series from the anime and then go to buy the games and see that the games are actually quite cheap. You know, it's, we're going to hopefully get more fans just for them selling it so cheap. I mean, I don't know if, if they, they price themselves at a point where now they have to sell them as cheap as they come out, or... Because obviously they can never really increase the price again. No, I think it's the stock always low, I suppose. I know it's all... It's gonna, it's gonna base, hover, base, isn't yeah. it? It'll hover around for a bit in terms of the price. I think it'll be between sort of twenty to fifteen pound these days. Um, Solid Man's asking how many chapters are in the Shenmue series. I know games-wise, Yuzuki wants to do. I think it's five. Um, chapters-wise, it's been touted anything between 
11 and 16 depending on what cuts have been made over the years and other bits and pieces so we don't yeah. re we don't have a categoric answer on it but there's plenty of sort of media out there that would would suggest it's between 11 and 16 and it's always been he's never really been clear himself you know where we are in the game are we i know Obviously, the boat chapter was supposedly uh, chapter two because I think it says on the comic page chapter two. And, uh, you know, you, you make a guess really at where we are in, in, in terms of chapters because Guilin was supposed to be chapter five, wasn't it? Originally, she got ch mm. chapter three was Hong Kong, chapter four was Kowloon, chapter five was Guilin. But does that include Bailey Village now as well? We don't actually know. So we up to chapter 6 perhaps because of Niawu. Or was Niawu originally intended? Because um, it's, it's, it's the first made up location in there. I know it's based on another location that I forget the name of. But obviously up until now we've had real life locations in Yokosuka, Hong Kong, Kowloon, uh, Guilin. You, know, you can visit them in real life, but you can't visit the other because it's a made-up uh, location. So that that's an interesting thing, really, that we've got a, a made-up location. So I know Bailey Village is obviously you can't travel to Bailey Village, uh, but you can travel to Queen Lane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I know. Yeah, it depends where we are. Where do you think we are in chapters wise? I know. I know. Did, wasn't didn't you say you say in an interview forty percent through the whole story? Is that, is that right? Am I am I remembering that correctly? Is that four after Shemu three. I think you are right. Yeah, I remember that. After Shemu, absolutely. Yeah, you're quite right. We get the community keeps making noise. Um, yeah. Then it makes Shemu four all the more realistic, and it's something that Cedric has said to us that. The tweezathons make a difference, and if we keep banging on the door, eventually they're going to have to answer it. I mean, do you want to speak about what Cedric says, uh, Matt, because on YouTube we've got Strictly say here asking if there's any news on the fourth game, mm. and obviously there yeah. is news, but... <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't want to spoil too much of it, because it's... But yeah, okay. But for the for benefit of everybody in here, um, I'm still going to ask you to go and listen to it because Cedric talks about also sort of pre-production for Shenmue 3, the Kickstarter, um, some of the development as well. So it's it's well worth listening to anyway. But for strictly Sega Europe, um, Shenmue 4 is in a state that is ready to be pitched to publishers. So they have some video footage of Shenmue 4 ready. They have a couple of small playable areas ready to go. And from what Cedric was saying in the interview, he was saying it looks better than Shenmue 3 does. He said he looked really impressed with it. So it's, I, I want to stress this to everybody in, in the chat. It's not a green light. It, you know, Shenmue 4 is not in official development, but why isn't it have been working on this behind the scenes? So, And the fact it's going to be pitched says there's some interest there, to me, personally. Yeah, got the, the link there. It's just asking the thing. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> I don't know if um, how many of you were in when we first started, but we've got uh, a podcast feed where these interviews are actually going. If you just want to listen to the audio side of things, um, you can wherever you'd, you'd normally get a podcast. If you guys listen to podcasts, so you can go on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, for example. Type in Shemu Dojo Show, and uh, the feed of feed of uh, Matt's interviews there and also we're doing some uh, monthly episodes where we're going through a bit of a, a deep discussion on certain aspects of the series um, so you can pick that up there and obviously they're also on the YouTube channel which that link I've sent you there in the chat is obviously it's the Shenmue Dojo official webpage and uh, I'm pretty sure you've got the YouTube link from that have you? Yeah. so yeah there's the, the YouTube link from that link let me give you the direct link uh, so. Renners has just popped in saying hello, two new guys doing the show. Oh yeah, I suppose we're new, We've this is our second stream, the two of us. Um, we did a Shenmue 3 stream with Corey, Adam Corrick and James so Rayner a few weeks go, back. Um, but just, just for anybody who just come in and missed the introduction again, um, me and James are co-owners of the dojo. So you'll sort of see us popping around on social media, putting things out and, and the rest of it. So welcome to everybody. Um, Ren is also saying Shenmue 4 will happen. Yes, it will. It will happen eventually. I'm sure of it. I'm not basing that off of anything. 
but I think it'll happen. And I think it's it's going to happen, and it, it all depends on how well and how su- successful the anime actually is as well, because all this sort of stuff works in tandem. So if people are enjoying the content from the anime side of things, you know, there's more chance of people getting into the game series and vice versa. You know, if we're into the game series now, like us, there's more chance of us going off to watch the anime. So we can kind of, um, you know, be, uh, make both things a success, if that, that makes sense, like, uh, in tandem. Abdullah's saying, can we not push Sega to get involved? Yeah, I, there's there's no harm in it, I think. Um, I, it's their IP at the end of the day, they can sort of, you know... I mean, the, th- the thing with Sega, if you think about it, is they released the first two games, obviously, to take advantage of the fact that Shenmue 3 was coming out. So they thought, you know, people have been asking for the Shenmue series to return for so long. Yu Suzuki's got the license, the IP or whatever, to, to create Shemin 3. So say, from Sega's point of view, they were at a stage where they were like, oh, you know, let's let's bring back Shemin 1 and 2, because right now people are going to want to play those games and buy those games before playing Shemin 3. So it was like, like a nice little cash cow, in a sense, for Sega to do that. Hi. And now they've stood back and watched the success of Shemin 3, so, you know, obviously they know how successful Kickstarter was, it broke records. So, you know, they, they've watched that happen, and I'm not sure if they're clued up on all the sales figures. I'm sure they are because uh, Sega is still on the box, into it? Shenmue 3, as far as I'm aware, the logo or whatever. So, they've still got some involvement, and they're taking a certain amount of revenue from Shenmue 3 as well. So, it is in their best interest that the series is still, you know, still burns fucking up my words here but you know it's still a success it's in their best interest to keep the Shenmue name which is why we're getting all this merch on uh, Sega Europe's shops you know what I mean Uh, you're getting your t-shirts that we're actually giving away in this stream we're giving one of the the Rio Hazuki shirts away Yeah. so it's in their best interest that all this stuff keeps selling in fact it's consistently sold out from the there you go guys uh, as the shirt, but yeah, it's um, consistently sold out on the Sega shop. All the merch that they released, you know, there's coins. I think they made was it 500 or a thousand thousand of those coins, or a couple hundred anyway, and they sold out straight away. Um, right. So I think they'll take this kind of sales figures, at least from the merchandise and how well Shemu 3's done. I, th- I think it's in their best interest to really consider Shemu 4. In my opinion, Complete that. and especially you know they're bringing back all these other old IPs and they're, they're, they're leasing out their titles basically, aren't they? To other other companies, you've got people that team working on who have released Streets of Rage Four, the Panzer Dragoon game that we've had recently. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of these remasters Chizuka. and re-releases of old games that they're li- just literally just letting other companies produce, and they're just whacking a Sega logo on the box. And it's selling because it's a Sega title. Um, so I, I, I think it would be in their best interest to, um, to to work with WiseNet and you know do whatever they can to help make Shemu 4 a reality. I guess I don't know what you think, Mark. Yeah, I think what, what we've got to consider here is Shenmue was a dead franchise before Shenmue 3, and I think. The biggest success of Shenmue 3 is, well, you know, regardless of what people think of the game or not and, and potential sales, is it's revived the series, it's current again, it's available, it's out there. So, in that respect, it's a success. Could it have been better in terms of sales, some people's views on the games maybe? Yeah, of course it could, but I think overall, I think we're in a very, very good place. And like James is saying, the merch all sells out all the time. Um, and we're suckers for it. Let's be, let's be honest. We're, we're Shenmue fans. We're, we're going to get rinsed by it, but we do it because we love it, and it's really, really good stuff. So, I think there's there's more there than meets the eye. I mean, with with this merch and Shenmue Three, obviously Sega will be taking their cut on it, which makes things a bit more sort of appetising to them. So yeah, we just we just have to see. But I think, like I said, I think we're in a really good place here. Um, oh, wrong button. It'd be interesting to know if. Uh... You know, Cedric was saying the pitch in Shenmue 4, if Sega's one of the people they're pitching to. <laughs> pitching your own IP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Well, 
I have a theory, and I know Epic don't inspire confidence in some people, um, but we'll, we'll leave that by the by for now. But in an interview I did with Ryan Payton, part two, he talks about um, Fumito Ueda, who I'm sure everybody knows, Last Guardian is, is one of the big titles he, he's worked on. Um, obviously, he's now in a solo studio who have a publishing deal with Epic, and Ryan Payton negotiated that deal. So I have a theory that one of the publishers is likely to be Epic because of the connections that are there. It just seems to make sense. Will they take it on or not? I don't know. Is it even a possibility? Again, I, I'm, I'm, make, I'm trying to join the dots a little bit here more than anything else. Just a quick note, I've seen Abdullah has won one of the Steam keys for Shenmue 1 and 2 on the oh, PC. Um, could you... Because our direct messages don't always work when we do these joint streams. If you've got us on Twitter, can you direct message us on there and we'll pick it up after the stream. And I'm going to quickly do another one. Because I need to give these away. So bear with me just a second, everyone. What are you doing? Are you doing the, the t-shirt last? I'm doing the t-shirt last. <laughs> right, we have another Steam key kicking in any second now. There we go. It's in same entry requirements as before. It's got to go on both PlayStation and Xbox. So it's a good time, really, to. Um, yeah. I was saying it's good, good time to uh, join us, really, because we've got a good chance with us giving away four of these Steam keys to, to get one. Evening sure film. Everyone in here Evening film, dude. Games, Hi, film, dude. Oh, I've gone to the wrong place. Yeah, the thing with the, what I double says uh, about Shemu 4 going on to Xbox as well, I don't know, it's... I think, do you, do you, would you assume that Sony is still backing Yu Suzuki and the team? Is, um, it, is it likely to be another exclusive? I know Cedric and said... Having said that, now that it's available on Steam, etc., is there a possibility now for it to be on Xbox? Was Sony uh, a one-year exclusive exclusivity I as well? I think it was longer than that. Uh, again, right. I know Cedric actually talked about his view on it in March. I think he did a and a on, on Facebook, and he was saying that he thought it would probably be on PS5, Shenmue 4. Um, but... Uh, I don't know if that's categoric because obviously it's a different game. They might they might be able to negotiate different deals, etc. Film dude, any news on the anime yet? Once the date is announced, I'm getting a Crunchyroll subscription. I think I think we all will. Um, the only news yeah. that we really have on it is obviously we know it's happening. <laughs> um, there was an interview with Famitsu, which Phantom River Stone uh, kindly translated for us. And they were saying that I think two episodes have been recorded without the voice or produced without the voiceovers. So th that's the only real news that's we have. Out of thirteen. Yeah, out of thirteen episodes. So it's there's there's a lot of work to go on there. I suspect it'd be towards the end of this year when it comes out. But again, I'm just guessing on that. I don't. Yeah, you know, there's no categoric thing to know on there, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Renners on YouTube yeah, says, what do, you uh, what do you two guys think of Shenmue 3? Because he gets a lot of hate from the Shenmue community, but he loves Shenmue 3 and has waited 18 years to see Ballet Village, and it's awesome. I uh, Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Go on, Mike, you go first. I was going to say, I think you summed that up quite well. I think the hate in the community is overblown. I think there's a lot of people out there who will just jump on it because it's easy to be negative on something. Did I enjoy it? Yes, absolutely. Was it perfect? No. That there's there's flaws in the game. I think they're well publicised in terms of the story content, in terms of the fighting systems, not quite there. But do you know what? My expectations, given it was a Kickstarter title, you know, they weren't that high. We we didn't know what we were going to get, and actually, the game we got in terms of a full fat Shenmue, barring the story content, yeah, it's a natural progression from Shenmue Two, and I think that's what I wanted at the end of the day. And what about you, James? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's been so long, you know, the 18-year gap, but you do build these expectations up in your head, don't you? I think we've all had these high hopes and high expectations for what we want our perfect Shenmue 3 to be. You know, a lot of people would have wanted them somehow to, in, you know, 2019 or whatever, to somehow release it on the Dreamcast still. You know, there's, there's a lot of people wanting... I think they just... 
we we played the first two games so much that you just you can't imagine seeing the game any differently than those sort of Dreamcast graphics and stuff. So when we were seeing these new graphics and obviously we were a little bit concerned about the character models at the time and I think that was one of the problems of the Kickstarter was just being able to see the progression from the team as an ongoing thing and they kept showing us uh, you know new trailers and stuff years before it was even due to be completed. So you were seeing the game so early on that you couldn't help but be a little bit disappointed I think because uh, it's not looking like how you would have expected it to in your head because you've created those images of what you want the perfect shimmer to be for that for, for so long kind of thing so it kind of um, uh, didn't really help them in a way showing as much as everyone wanted to see and be, be kept updated with the progress that they were doing with Shenmue 3, I think just seeing it in those early stages really put a lot of people off and it allowed the media to poke fun at it really with you know the dead eyes thing and all that sort of stuff which obviously in the end if you were to judge the game from what we got uh, obviously that wasn't, that wasn't even a problem, that wasn't even an issue it's just uh, obviously that damaged the, the Shemu name really by seeing that early progression that they were working on the game and I just think that what we got in the end if they'd have shown that <laughs> back in 2015 our minds would have been blown, completely blown because from what Shemu 3 looks like and plays like now it's the perfect sequel to Shemu 2 really it, it carries on from where it, Shemu 2 left off the graphics are amazing um, you know, it's, it retains the Shenmue gameplay. It's got fully voiced, as we all wanted, both dubs, Japanese, English. You know, if you were shown that game back in 2015 at E3 as the trailer, we'd have all, you know, not just been crying, I think we'd have been hysterical for, <laughs> you know, probably year, the full five years, but because we saw it so early on as well and saw the development of it, it allowed us to get used to how it was being made kind of thing and I just think a lot of people by the time it was released were already disappointed even though they hadn't played it, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, so to answer the question, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I think we'd be, it'd be remiss of us to ignore, and I don't want to sound negative here because yeah, I love the game it's, and it's a game, you know, we waited 18 years for this. But you know, there are obviously the issues with it. But the big, biggest thing I can tell you is they are listening. WiseNet and the people around WiseNet are listening to us. And that's the big thing here. They, they, they're, they're taking that feedback on board. It's not like they've just gone, meh, screw everybody, we're just going to do what we want. They, they've, they've listed, you know, they, they are listening to us. So they know the fighting system needs you know, reworking and tidying up a bit. They know they need some more story content. So, yeah, I think we're in a good place, and I think with the development of Shenmue... Well, what Ryan said to you was, uh, you know, speak the criticisms of the game, because then that allows them to fix them for Shenmue 4, but he also said, also make sure that you let Yu Suzuki and the team know the good things as well, because if they don't know actually what people liked in Shenmue 3, it's like a, a positive, then they don't know whether to, to leave it in Shemu 4 or not. No more. So I think if you can... I don't know what the best way is of letting that be known. You know, maybe you could send Joel a Kickstarter message or something and just say like, what you really liked about the game as well. But I think the negatives and the positives go hand in hand really, so... Um, and it's, it's how you communicate them as well. It's, if, you, if you do it in a respectful manner, then I think people are more willing to listen to you. If, if people start screaming and shouting from the rooftops, then I think all you're going to do is upset and get people's backs up. Whereas people will listen to constructive criticism, and, and they are. That that's the thing. They are listening to us. Uh, missed a few comments. Sorry on Twitch. So, uh, film dude did say, "Have any of us been to Hong Kong?" I haven't. No, I haven't. No, unfortunately not. I'd like to. I've been to Japan and I did go to China. I went to like Beijing and didn't really go any Shenmue locations. Uh, but I'd, I would like to go back, obviously. I'd like to go Hong Kong and Guilin. Those are on the bottom list. Uh, right side of the left said there are some annoying things about it. The camera seems too close to Rio. 
people can de uh, keep disappearing on the street, but you can still bump into them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that mainly happens more on the PS4, doesn't it? Where the characters haven't loaded in. I think uh, it's slightly better on you know, now it's on PS5. Which, which is why they had those those walking sections. Mm. Uh, you know that we assume, we assume that they, they put those walking sections in place so that it allowed the time for the character models to load. Um, I do think it's in improved. Camera, you can actually. There is a, a Shenmue 3 mod in there that Lemon, Lemon Haze has made. Uh, yeah, on PC. The dojo. It's like a classic camera yeah, mod. You can, you can change the camera angle so you can have it behind Rio if you want to play like that. And uh, to be honest, I prefer it like that. Uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the thinking was, actually. It's probably something I should have asked thinking about it now. I, I wonder what the thinking was. I a question for, like, Ryan, something like that. Yeah. What he thought of that. Because obviously Ryan's played the first two games. He knows the camera's always been behind Rio. So for having that sort of... Gears of War kind of to-the-side camera, I wonder what the, the thinking was there. And I, I, I don't know. Bit. I don't know. I mean... So. Oh, that was awful. Oh, the it's, just the, it's just the norm, really, for these modern games, mm. isn't it? And I think that's probably what it was more than anything else. I think they just sort of went with a trend, possibly. Um, I didn't mind it, but I, I played it with the classic camera mod on PC, and it is, it is better for a Shenmue experience, but we're used to that sort of thing, aren't we? Yeah, like Chow says, it's the end thing to do into the off-site off perspective. Ah. I suppose that as a game developer, you're probably thinking like, it allows you to see more of the world because obviously you're not blocked by the character model. But I just think for Shenmue, they should have at least retained what everyone's used to. Maybe they, they could have had an option with it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that would nice. A um, option. Yeah, film dude's quite right. Yeah, actually, it, it, it seems to be the standard these days. And yeah, I, yeah, I completely yeah, agree. I, with I that. don't have a problem with it either. It was just I know a lot of people mentioned mentioned the camera. Yeah, Rats had a laugh says I kept having to adjust to try and keep the camera at an acceptable angle behind you. <laughs> yeah, it took some getting used to when I first played it, I must say. Um, but yeah, I, I had no issue with it. I like the classic camera a bit more, but. Um, but um, yeah. Abdullah says Did everyone here buy the DLC at full price? I mean, I did, I bought I it. did, yeah. I day one, basically. I did on Epic. I didn't on Steam. It was on sale when I got it on Steam, actually. So, but that was a little. Yeah, that was in November. I picked that up because I got got a Kickstarter copy through through Steam, which is great. And then I thought I'll just throw the DLC. I think it worked out at about five quid. So yeah. Right. Give me a second. I'm going to draw the next Steam key out because the competition's just finished. So hang on. So what's your plan there then, Matt? Two an hour? <laughs> <You've> <laughs> an hour already. I didn't, well, to be fair, we've got plenty of time. Okay. Over the shoulder popularised by Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 4 had QTEs. QTEs first appeared, then Shenmue, Shenmue 3 had an over the shoulder camera and we could full circle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack another one out straight away. Uh, Ren is on YouTube says, I agree with what you guys have said, sadly the Dreamcast is dead and we have to move on. We are getting Shemu now, if it's on our chosen platform or not, I think is what he meant. I'll quickly save it here. I think everyone's... I think that uh, for Shemu 3 to be made on the Dreamcast was just a bit of a... I'd, I'd love yeah. to see see if it was ever in um, pre-production for, for the Dreamcast. I'd be very because remember, I think it was Sega Europe actually said it was in development. Nathan has the screenshot from it from the Sega Europe website at the time. So I'd be very very interested mm -hmm. to see what was in development at the point in time. What's what was the screenshot? Is it the one with that master? With the, the green. No, it's off the say it's off of the Sega Europe website. It's a news article um, saying okay. that Shenmue 3 was in development. Joey. 
Aaron should like an article. Yeah. yeah. Like an announcement. I was just in the um, remember I think we did a, a media thing, didn't we, with the uh the sort of screenshots from a magazine, weren't they? Or or some sort of Japanese sort of thing mm. with the um the old version of Bailey Village. Um, so we're just cracking something into chat. This is what I was thinking of, I'll put it in the chat. So. But obviously that was um cut content really not. I don't think that was them working on Shenmue 3 for the Dreamcast. I think that was um I think what people were saying was, even though that does look like Bailu Village, you know the you know the screenshots I'm talking about, Matt? Yes. The cut content stuff. Mm, mm. Got the, the guys that are on the sort of, uh, uh, some sort of exercise pole thing. <laughs> Uh, we a... all thought that was Bailu cool. Village, didn't mm. we? But someone did right say up. that that was Cut Village on the way to Bailu Village. I don't know where that information came from. I don't know. I'd have to. We'd have to dig that out. But I, I I'd have been surprised if if there wasn't anything in sort of pre-production to Shenmue through on the Dreamcast, even if it was very small. Renners, who's your favourite character from the whole of the Shenmue series? Oh, 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 that's a hard question. Favourite character? For me, I think it's probably Ren. I don't know, I just like his his attitude and the fact that he's, he's, he's got Ryo's number in terms of the way he winds him up. I quite like that. James, what's yours? I would, I'd probably agree on Ren, but I'll say something different so we're not saying the same things. But I'd, I'd, Let's go with Guizan just because I think, and I'm not sure when he's going to show up again, but I think uh, I've, there's always been that kind of a, a thing with Guizan when he hurt his leg at the end of Shenmue 1 where he's, he's a guy that I really want to see again in the series, and I was expecting to see him in Shenmue 2 at some point, like just randomly appear. And then there was always a little bit of a, a hope that in Shenmue 3 he'd just catch up with Ryo and appear at some point. Uh, obviously we've got the phone call, the international phone card thing in Shenmue 3 where you could talk So I don't know whether, whether or not he's actually ever going to catch up with Ryo now. Uh, based off that. But I, I'd like to see Guizang again. Does he even know where Ryo is? He knows he's in China, but does he know where he is? Is it ever mentioned in the conversation? I can't remember. What, the telephone conversation? Yeah. I can't remember, but he, I know he does update people on kind of where he's at. I'm not sure if he does like the degrees on him. It's, it's, it's just a video game thing, isn't it, where, you know, like how Zhang showed up. Mm, <laughs> just turned up. It's that like kind of thing where he could just show up. He wouldn't have to have a particular reason for it. Uh, Chow says, I reckon the village cut probably was Bailu. Because there is a cut. It does look like Bailu, and obviously you can compare the screenshots to how Bailu village actually did come out. And obviously you've got the tower thing there, which people yep. were comparing to the Bal Tower. And... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know where I heard that, but I feel like there was an article, or at least a rumour, that suggested that this cut content village wasn't by the village, it was between uh, the journey from Grand Shan to by the village. And obviously the, the loan screen there says the Owl village. Mm, yes it does, doesn't it? So, I think it would have been, if it wasn't Bailu Village, I think Bailu Village would have looked very similar to that, had it come out on, on the Dreamcast. I think I actually think it would probably been a bit more rudimentary than what we got in the actual Shenmue 3 we got. Um, I mean, I think that'd be interesting. Um, ooh. Renault. One of the interesting things I thought was, when you know when you get off the boat in Shenmue, Shenmue 2, Hi. Mm. Uh, in Guilin, and all the the villagers are in like you know villager attire. I found, found it interesting that they kind of went with just modern clothes in Shenmue Three for the Bali village. No jeans and t-shirts. Uh, that was something that seemed, felt a bit out of place when I first started the game. So I was expecting the villagers to be in that sort of villager attire, just a rural village. Yeah. 
I, 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 I thought it was going to be a bit more stripped back in terms of the way it was presented than it was. I, I mean, I had no issue with the way Bailu was. Actually, I thought Bailu was really polished in Shenmue 3 and had some really nice moments in the game as a whole. Um, you could argue the arcade and the pawn shops were probably about out of place. The herb collecting fit job fitted it perfectly, as did the wood chopping. Seems like the sorts of things you'd be doing in that sort of village. So... Yeah, I, I think Bailu, what we got was very, very good. Hey. Renners is asking, the wor what's our worst character from the whole of the Shenmue series? That's a good question. James, can you go first? I need to have a think. Well, the one that pops up, up to me is I've never really cared for one. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a bit annoying. Obviously, he's a bit of a brat at the start of Shenmue 2. And he does become a friend of Rio, but uh, he doesn't really have that much of a re relationship with him other than saving him on the loot trap and you know that bit where he stays over night on for a little shit. So I'd you say Wong or um, Yuan maybe, she's a bit annoying. I'm trying to think for wor worst characters. Who did I find really annoying? I tell you, I used to find Goro really annoying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna inflict the wrath of a few people in chat right now, but it's not quite Peter's stand. It's not quite Peter's standard hating Goro, but yeah, I, um, but yeah, Goro was a bit. I grew, character grew on me, shall we say? I think if I had to answer, I'd probably go there. Um, I actually. I don't know. Is anyone in the chat? Can anyone in the chat uh, tell us your favourite and worst characters? I'd be interested to see what other people's responses are. Right side of life. Yeah, Goro was annoying. <laughs> Retro Godfather. Wood shopping was. A, it could be quite addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the world record for the wood chopping is. I think it. I'm sure I've seen a, um, a 161 or 166. I might even be... Sorry for interrupting that. I just, I thought you'd carry on talking. I just... You were saying the world record's 156? One, I think 161 I've seen. I may have seen something higher than that for wood chopping. Yeah. Hey. Um, welcome, uh, King of Dairy Queen, by the way. Just see, seeing you pop into the raffle there. So who won these raffles? Up, boy? You've got... Abdullah won one, Chow won the second. Um, I'm doing the third one now. Yeah, cool. Oh, interesting. I thought it was one. It was his favourite. Oh, shit. Was, was really that is the thing with Shemi, you know, like, oh, even... Well, I don't want to say, like, a lot of the enemies learn from the mistakes, but obviously, Wong, at the start of Shemi 2, steals your bag, and going into the game originally, I don't think there's anyone that knew to save money. Or reaching that point, so we're all a bit shocked and devastated like all the money you earned at the end of Shenmue 1, the forklift job, it's just suddenly snatched away from me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we all hated Wong originally, but yeah, like, you know, like Abdullah says, you know, keep friends and those you love close to you because, you know, even those sort of people actually, once you get to know them, and that friendship develops. Yes. Well, like even then, Ren, Ren's like kind of a bad guy, but the relationship he makes with Ryo now is, you know, it's a friendship, friendship, friendly, friendly relationship. Mm. Mm. I don't think it's funny at the end of Shenmue 3 when he says, how are we, how are we even friends? Yeah, that's quite, <laughs> quite good. Yeah, I miss the forklift too, actually, when we have this. I didn't mind this minigame, it's alright. I'm going to draw the Steam key. I agree with Chow as well about Shilling. That was one character that when we saw in the trailers, she looked like she was going to be quite an in-depth character, and then obviously there's like one cutscene with her, which is a shame. It did seem like another one of those fan-made kind of characters that Rio would befriend and 
I just think they, they did just miss a little, a few little story elements in Shenmue 3 that would have fleshed the game out and made us care about these characters uh, a lot more than we actually did in the end. Yeah, apartments. Right side of life, you've won a Steam key. Um, if you drop us a direct message on Twitter, if you haven't followed us over there on Reddit, it's just easier because our direct messages don't always come through when we join joint stream. So drop us a direct message on Check Twitter. Actually message me. I've got one more to give away, plus the t-shirt. I'll, I'll, mess, I'll message you, child, don't worry. Yeah, oh, man. I don't think anyone's actually messaged the chat one. So I'm going to put a question to, to the chat, actually, is... Assuming Shenmue 4 is happening, what do you want to see in it? I just want I want to see a bit more of those sort of underlying storylines development like what's happened to Zimic for example um, how, how is um, Niao-san gonna gonna in, sort of get involved in the story um, what's the what's the issues in the Chi man I just I think the main system's fine in Shenmue 3 just needs polishing up a bit I just want to see some really good story content now and really sort of go to town on it I mean I don't really want to spoil too much, but what we did get of the Aosun at the end of Shenmue 3 is, you know, that's kind of unexpected, that's a bit of a character twist for us, because obviously we assume that Landy and all those sort of Chi men leaders are working together and they're sort of betraying. Mm. That's kind of an interesting plot point that no one's really gone too much in, into detail about really it's kind of a passing story moment but seeing how that unfolds her relationship with Landy in the fourth game that'd be interesting to see mm. and obviously you know these, these things these are unanswered questions they're still unanswered so it's not like we, we may never find them out we just need a fourth game we just need a fifth game I'm pretty sure Yuzu Zuki's not forgotten that he introduced a character called Zim and the uh, you know Hewing to her brother has gone on a revenge quest similar to Rio. I don't think he's going to forget that as a plot point. So, obviously, it's just a patience thing, really. Isn't it? If it wasn't answered in Shenmue 3, it could be answered in Shenmue 4, and that's still quite exciting. I think it's exciting when you think about it in terms of Shenmue as a character that you're introduced to in the prologue of Shenmue 1, but you actually don't even meet until you know, 50 hours into the saga at the end of Shenmue 2. For example, you know, these these things take time to develop and seeing Shenhua that far in the game is, when you look back on it, quite mind-blowing really, that she's the main character now alongside Ryo in Shenmue 3, they're going on the journey together, and in fact it wasn't until the end of Shenmue 2 that you, you, you even met it. I'm just going through looking at some of the chat in there, right? P Peter Wilson, welcome by the way. Um, Easier achievements, brackets, less grindy ones. Yes, a thousand fish. Anyone? Yeah, I ju I'll, I'll leave that one just there. <laughs> Retro Godfather, sort of faster pace, more character development, more story. Yeah, more like Shenmue 2. I can see where you're going with that, actually. I think um, I, I can see Shenmue 4 being what Shenmue 2 was to Shenmue um, 1. That's what I'm getting at. It's probably yeah. badly worded. Renners, Chi Men, and Strong Each other. I want to see a big battle with them. Yes, absolutely. That sounds really, really good. Uh, what else have we got in there? Zimming and Rio making allies would be great in Shenmue 4 since both are after two men. Yeah, that would be interesting. What do you think will happen with Rio when we get to the cave where the two men are? Don't know. I think there's a lot lot that could happen there. And oh, Shen World's just popped back in to say hello again. So hello again. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, like Chow says, it's, it's, it's going to be good now to see the relationship between Rio, Ren, and Shenhua because obviously Rio's been on the journey on his own until he met all these friends and stuff, but he's still on the journey on his own. But then he's he's met Shenhua at the end of Shenmue 2 and they've gone on the journey together, so there's like two characters now, two main characters, and now 
Ren's been introduced back again, and three of them are going on a, on a journey together, so it'll be interesting to see the relationship in chatting, bouncing between all three of those characters. That, that'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will, and it'd be, be good to see how they sort of push and that if, forward. If they int introduce, introduce some others, you know, Chewing's going to come back at some point. Um, you'd, you'd have expected her to, and then obviously Zinlung. So seeing these characters that haven't interacted with each other in the games that we played suddenly being in a position where you know you've got Shenhua chatting to Chewing, for example, <laughs> that's quite a, an interesting concept, really, at this stage. What else we've got in chat? Uh, strictly say Europe. I won't see more Shenhua, Shenhua's powers yet. I think we got some little hint of something in in Shenmue Three with with um. It, uh, at the end of Bailey Vision, I can't remember his name now. The Mongolian wrestler dude, Yang Lang, that's it. Yeah, Yang Lang, yeah. Um, so we've got a little hint of it there. Um, who else have we got? Uh, well, there's that thing where she was chatting to Ren, and then Ren suddenly seemed a bit weird. And stopped this yeah. conversation. I mean, I don't know whether those powers <laughs> that she's actually doing some sort of mind trick. Or oh, she just uh, gave him a death what we there. Were. Yeah, we we were suggesting that way. I mean, the, the interrogation scene was a bit weird. <laughs> uh, but I was surprised, to be honest, that they didn't go into more of Shenhua's sort of powers. Because it, it felt like, and it, you know, it's it's hard to know whether they're trying to retcon some of the stuff like they did with the, the sword of the seven stars, going from that massive sword to a little dagger in Shenmue Three. Obviously, the dagger was what Yu Suzuki originally intended it to be, but uh, well, the it's not really rumor, but what people were saying in the article was that the reason the Sword of the Seven Stars is a full sword at the end of Shenmue 2 was because they knew they were going to have to go on, on, on a high to end in the series for the Dreamcast and didn't know when they'd be able to pick the series back up again. So they just went mental at the end of the game, didn't they? And did all that floaty sword stuff and, and Yu Suzuki yeah. always wanted the sword to be a dagger, according to himself. Which is why it's more of a small sort of blade in Shemu 3. And they got that like so, full on He Man the, the ret sword. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not to say like the retcon is most stuff, but it's interesting. Yeah, I expected to see more of it in Shemu 3, and mm. we didn't. Uh, do, 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 do. What else have we got? The last saying chat. Xbox release for Pete Wilson. Well, possibly. We, we don't know if that'll happen or not. Um, we shall see. Uh, Solid Man's asking how the sales of Shenmue 3 were so far. We don't have any official numbers. Um, Cedric has been quite open in saying it probably didn't sell as well as they'd have hoped. But we know that it's done financially okay. Um, Embrace a group who own Deep Silver did a financial press conference about this time last year actually and they said they financially had done fine but that Shenmue is, is, is a bit of a niche game so I, that says to me probably didn't sell as much as they'd have hoped as well but it's clearly at least broken even if not made some money here or there and then you've got to consider the merchandise and things that have come around yeah. since then as well so no official it's numbers not but it's, not, it's, not it's like okay the suddenly ended mm. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said the other, the other week, it, when it was released on Steam, it was in the top 20 or you even say the top 7 at one point, or was just making that up? I don't remember about top 7, but it was definitely in the top 20 uh, new yeah. titles for revenue Seven. streams on, on Steam, which when you consider yeah. it was on sale at the time, um, that's pretty good going. <laughs> Ren has bought the game four times. I think we, we've <laughs> we probably propelled it as high of a number as we all can, to be fair. I think I've got it about ten times. All on the different platforms, PS4, Steam, Epic, GOG. On PS4 I've got about... Probably about ten copies of it, to be honest. GOG and Steam, GOG and Steam. Picks and Love. Well, you've, got, you've got the collector's edition, the standard editions we bought. Picks and Love version. And the new complete collection. Mm. Digitally, we've, we got it from the Kickstarter twice. So got the PS3 version and the PC version from the Kickstarter. So yeah, I think we've all bought it about ten times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Go, Retro Godfather, I have a few versions, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's part of the reason though why they keep pulling out this merchandise, because they know we're going to buy it. They know that our wallets... If, 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 we, we, if everyone just bought, it one, bought one copy, they'd probably be able to sold 100. <laughs> it's probably like 100 copies. But we just keep buying them and buying it and buying it, so they, they sold like 100,000. <laughs> Well, that's cool, but Ren says mm -hmm. he bought a copy for his ten-year-old. Good work. Well, get them into it early. Ren, does your so ten-year-old like the first two games by any chance? Just out of interest, because I see like you see, I see photos of people playing it with their children now and again, which is nice. Mm. Remember that time uh, Yu Suzuki was standing by the kid playing it. <laughs> Mm. He was a kid playing it in a kiosk, I think, just before it was released. And he's pointing at the kid and laughing, kind of thing. I think you would, though, wouldn't you? If something you made a kid was enjoying and being grossed in. I mean, yeah, we, I'm assuming that most of us were probably in our early teens when this came out. So, obviously, I mean, it did help at the time, there was nothing like it, but I do think that Shenmue is a series, if you let it sort of capture your mind a little bit and you get into it and you get into the world and, and the rest of it, then I think there's plenty, plenty of people who can pick it up and would enjoy it. Uh, it's very much struggled with the QTEs. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet the Shenmue 3 QTs were enjoyable. They were hard. They were really hard. Strictly <laughs> Sega Europe. Uh, Ren is my favourite Shenmue character, I think. I just like his. Um, I don't know, I just like his attitude. And he's got Ryo's number in terms of sort of out bantering him and winding him up. I, quite, I find it quite funny. Yeah. See, I, 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 I'd say Ren as well. I just said Guizang. Let's see if it's. I can't remember if he's here yet or not. No. Oh, you're on about Wong's brother. Yeah. Little little secret if people haven't seen it. You got what? Um, what? They got Wang. Is it Wang or Wong? Wang, isn't it? From Shenmue Sorry, One. Sorry, says Wang. <laughs> His brother Wang pops Sam's up. Brother. I can't remember if it's. It might be a bit later on. He's like. He's on the top floor. Is that where he went? Oh, yeah. I haven't been watching this thing. Help if I went to the right bloody floor, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, supposed to own a fan website, and I can't even work out where the hell I'm going. It's good, isn't it? Did you get it? Yeah, I got there eventually. I got to. The, I was looking for 205, and I went to the wrong bloody door. <laughs> dear. Dear, oh dear. See myself. Another. The last Steam Key's up for, up for giveaway now, by the way, everyone, just so you know. I was going to say, do you remember what you picked from the sky the first time you played it? Oh, that's a question. I think I'd sold... I think I picked the cheap auction and then obviously went around asking about my new things. Yeah. Because you pay... if you give him the expensive option, he gives you more detail, doesn't he? I think he pretty much says, like... Manmo Temple, does he? Huh? If you give him the full amount. Let's find out. Because I'm loaded. Let's see what he says. Ren is shocking, he's sacked, yeah. He's, he's, he's just mentioned the spot. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. So he actually mentions Manmo Temple. It's interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. They like a slightly different conversation arc, which is quite nice. So 20, he says, it's a place called Mano something. 50, I think, does he say specifically go to like Manmo Bistro perhaps or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Oh, hi there, Max, in the, in the chat and entering the raffle. Brilliant. Nice to see you. Yeah, hi, man. But these sorts of little conversational yes. arcs were, were really sort of good at the time because there was almost like more than one way for you to like get to your goal, which was nice. Mm. It's that thing. I mean, later on in the game, in Kowloon, 
I've only just found out recently, like the last year or two, that you can you can find yuan when you're searching for it Sonic by going to a knife shop in the Thousand White Building. I always went to the the Moon Child Building where the the guy is. You know, he gives you the or you, uh, Ren gives him the capsule toy to so so speak to the teacher. And she says a, a lady with you know that bird, that talking bird. That's the route I always went. And then it's only like the last year or two I found that. You can talk in the knife shops, and the knife guy tells you where to go instead. Yeah, so probably... Godfather says, Niao's son has become one of my new favourite characters for the mystery. Who's oh, so could... the mystery no, behind her, actually, haven't they? Since we saw her... I mean, she was probably the first character a lot of people saw in regards to promotion yes. for the series. You've got the very first issue of the official... Uh, at least the UK based Dreamcast magazine, the front cover's got the Ni house on, uh, which is, you know, so people first learning about the game there, they've, they've got this this lady who they, they won't even see for the 20 odd years. Uh, Chow says, one thing I didn't like about the remasters, the bottom corner icon, icons preferred the Dreamcast animations. I didn't really like the the new QT icons. Ha! <laughs> Watch the uh, YouTube feed, the Switch feed. Uh, I why I look at ah, yeah, there must be a little bit of a lag on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But you know the the QT icons are used for the like the, the D pad, the left, right, up, down. When you've got the action QT where it stops. I didn't like how they did that because in the in the remasters I'm talking about because it is like a bit of a flash and actually it's difficult to know how many times it's actually flashed compared to the original game which was a bit more on point. You knew it was like up up A. Yes. Whereas when you've seen it on the remasters I, I found it to have a bit of a a weird flash <laughs> if if anyone knows what I mean. Well, that went well. <laughs> Good old lucky hit. I can't do a Shenmue stream without doing some lucky hit. It would be almost blasphemous if I didn't. Oh, come on! <laughs> Close. Oh, Renners has joined us on Twitch. Ah, oh, nice. I was gonna say it's amazing, really. The um, like you found out in the the Ryan Payton yes. that they, they built every single system from the ground up again for Shenmue 3. So obviously that even this lucky hit game in Shenmue 3, they actually built from scratch. <laughs> when you think of it. I thought Retro Golf file QT sections were through very well done in terms of animations, just too difficult. Yeah, I, I actually, and some of the fail states are really funny. There's some really good stuff in the fail. Hmm. Fire extinguishes the face. <laughs> so or getting smashed yes. in the face with a big tree log or... Yeah. There's some quite funny stuff. I think that's probably why they were so hard, because they wanted you to see those things. Because obviously in the first two games, if you're good at QTEs, you could probably never see a bad outcome. So because the Shenmue 3 ones are so, so difficult, I think everyone saw the bad outcome first. <laughs> is it only Twitch we're doing the raffles, is it? I, th I think so, although I have may have seen a YouTube entry pop in. Um, I thought the la that Landy and the Henchman fight looked awesome too. Yeah, Landy's character model is probably, probably the best one, in my opinion, in Shenmue 3. Really nailed the character model of the of Landy. No, it's not the T-shirt one, right side of life. But I know you've because you've already won one. I can just discount your entry, so don't don't worry unless you want to stay in it, of course. The T-shirt is, is last. Good if they did 
Is it large? I thought it was extra large. It's last, I said. The draw's last. It's extra large, the size. Oh, last. Sorry, sorry. It, yeah, Chow says, I think it'd be good if they did alternate QTEs if you failed the one before, etc. But obviously it adds to the yeah. Is yeah. it in, in Shenmue? It's kind of like uh, that section where you get hit by the watermelon. Yeah. Carry on. Smashed in the face of the watermelon. Yeah, whereas in Shemu 3, if you mess one off, it's done it. <laughs> yeah, so to restart. Alright, the raffle's shut for the steam key, I will draw it in a second. The henchmen in blue look good. Are you talking is that the last five before those were the Kickstarter backers, weren't they? Those I'm gonna go over here actually. There's a reason I'm walking as well. Okay, so making some good progress, actually. Yeah, I mean, I've buzzed, buzzed through it a little bit, but... Ooh, Isn't it on certain days, the F14... Um, Pops through the tomahawks yeah, in, in formation, like or tomcats, or whatever they are, in, in formation. Mm. I saw Ryuji do it on his stream. Someone told him how to do it. I think he came. I think it's as you're leaving Hong Kong. Um, I think it's just a random because he, he he kept going up and down the stairs probably about twenty times until it happened. But I think it's only on that that day as you're leaving. And you're saying goodbye to everyone. Hang on. I have to redraw that. Hang on. We've got... Right. Uh, Peter Canyon Wilson says, I bought my friend a copy of Shenmue 3, been holding out for an Xbox version, but that Cedric interview makes it pretty clear that ain't happening. Yeah. Peter Wilson over on YouTube has won a steam key if you could drop us a message on our twitter page because our direct messages don't always pick up when we join stream um and we'll sort you out runners yes it did go in i did see it there's one more raffle to come everyone and it's for this but it's not open yet it's not open yet you got you got to stick around if you if you want to enter this raffle you got to stick around draw that last. I'm being mean. <laughs> and I will announce it. Oh, oh what a map first. Damn it, I want a map. So in the chat obviously people have sort of come and gone across the evening so far and we're sort of yeah we're moving along quite nicely. Um, have we got any Shenmue fans who've discovered the game in the last couple of years or since the, the original Shenmue 3 Kickstarter? Um, just out of interest? If not, if not, then fair enough, I'm just intrigued because sort of on social media you see new people picking up the games even now, which is good to see. Yeah, I always like seeing that. Seeing someone who says, you know, playing Shenmue for the first time and it's amazing. Save, actually. You know, I I'd love to uh, <laughs> be able to experience it again for the first time. Could you guys allow 720p next time? It should be, because I'm downsampling the stream to 1080, is it? I'm on 1080p. On Twitch? Yeah, on Twitch. I'm, it might be on you you... Allow... Oh, Maybe it's too high, perhaps, he's saying. There isn't an option for 720 Oh, okay. So it could keep it, maybe it's buffering a lot uh, more. Okay. Is that what you mean? I'll look into it because it should be an option. I'm surprised it's not. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'll um, I'll certainly check into it. What am I doing? I'm running the wrong way. Idiot. <laughs> doing wood, but I like to do the wood actually because you'll get. Right, I'm going to quickly run to the loo while this goes in because otherwise I might die. <laughs> I'll be back. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure either why um, 
the option's not there, that's something I'll look into. I'll look into the, the Twitch site and see if we've got something set up there, or it could be Streamlabs or something. Yeah, same here. There's only 1080p. Sorry about that if you're getting a bit of buffering because uh, you can't downgrade this. I mean, there's an auto option. Have you tried the auto option? Does it actually do anything? Uh, it says, I'm trying to get my blood into the game. If I get him to play it for the first time, I'll get him to do it live on Twitch and YouTube. That would be great. I'd, I'd be up for that. If he does it, um, give us the, the link and we'll and kind of promote it on Twitter as well, getting a few views and stuff, and it's always interesting seeing people play the games for the first time, seeing the reactions and stuff, because obviously we know everything about the game, so when you play the game nothing's really brand new, so seeing someone play it for the first time through their eyes, I always like that. Yo, welcome back. That's better. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, also, um, the other option for Munchi, uh, we're actually live on YouTube as well, and there is different quality settings on YouTube. I put the link in Twitch there. Yes, it is Munchie. It is, it is Shenmue 1 and 2 HD. I should have said to everybody in, in the chat earlier, it's slightly modded. I've got the widescreen mod in here, so you haven't got the, sort of the letterboxing that you have in the, sort of the, the, the standard release. And also there's an improved music mod, which I've put in. Um, we did a mods new uh, mods um, implementation video. I think it was before Christmas, actually. So anybody who's got the PC versions of these or have won them today, um, and you want to start modding your games, um, we have a sort of step-by-step -step guide of how to do sort of the most common ones, and it's just worth doing if you're unsure about doing these sorts of things. Oh. I know, I know, I was when I first started doing it, but it's well worth a, a look. Let me get you the link. I might as well do this sort of stuff while I'm not playing the game, <laughs> like you are. Um, oh. Oh, no, no. So that video there is what Matt's on about. He's uh, he did a uh, how to install oh, no, no. the different Shenmue no, no. 1 and 2 mods to make the games like fully widescreen, full screen, some better textures and stuff. Shenmue 1 at least. Improved audio. あの、聞きたいことがあるんです。何かしら。武徳をご存知ですか？Chow says I think it's good to get someone into Shemu when they're really young before they see other games like GTA and stuff. でも、一体どうすれば？Yeah, I can see what you're saying actually because you're not going to know any better, are you? So you see something like this and see what it's trying to convey at the time. I think it. It would certainly convey and capture the imagination, and it, it still does. People still see it and still like it and still pick it up. Um, it is a bit of a cult classic, Shenmue One and Two, certainly. Well, I mean, my daughter, I'm going to definitely get her into the game series. Uh, I, don't know, I think she, she, she can't really help that. I was going to say she ain't got a choice, has she? <laughs> That's what I mean. But I suppose when you think about it, we kind of. At least from my childhood, I was the same in terms that I had a Mega Drive. Yeah, because I didn't know any better. I was still playing games on the spectrum. So in terms of game quality-wise, you can appreciate like spectrum games compared to Mega Drive games. Just because you, your mind's in that place, you, you're not elitist. <laughs> Whatever the term is these days, when people, you know, a lot of these these new 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 people to Shenmue when they were seeing. Um, footage of Shenmue 3 at the time, and, you know, they, they've got their vision of what a PlayStation 4 game looks like based off like Uncharted and you know, these stupid graphically advanced games. My daughter, who's seven, likes to play face off in Shenmue 3. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, I think that's games like that you Suzuki's probably put in. They, they sort of. Reasons a bit of a 
やっぱ地図を売ってるな伏線街の地図か後で使えるなそう、okay, then is a question for the chat、um, going through the three Shenmue games can you name for each game your favorite scene and why? They've all gone quiet, they must be thinking. <laughs> What I'm doing here? Five questions. In, in, in each three Shenmue game, right side of life, say Shenmue one, your favourite scene, Shenmue two, your favourite scene, Shenmue three, your favourite scene. Peter Wilson, you. <laughs> Bastard. Cheeky sod. I think the one that you came up with,、uh, Matt, is a good example of. Yeah. They did do story wise. In, in, Shen, in Shenmue 3, one of my favourite scenes is actually at what they call the second Shenmue tree, although it's not. I think it's a cherry tree, it's a dodgy translation, most likely. And you see the mark on the tree where、um, someone's been training and punching the tree. And it goes into、yeah. the song Memories of Distant Days and it goes back to Rio training with his father. That's a really nice story moment. It harks back to the original games. And it, that sort of story development and, and character development for Rio is the sort of thing they did in the first two games. Now you could say they obviously didn't do it enough and that's, that's up, to, up to you. But I think that, that's a really good story scene in Shenmue 3 and it sort of sets Rio's、yeah. mind a little bit. I liked it.、Um, there's obviously other、oh, bits.、Okay. And, Bits and pieces in there as well, but that, that scene stands out for me in Shenmue 3. Renners, I like every scene in Shenmue 1, 2, and 3. Yeah! But you must have favourites. <laughs> That's a good answer, all the same.、Yeah. I would have liked to see more stuff about Rio's father、mm. by the village. Yeah, I would, you know, definitely. Like, I'd say that, that, that really worked well seeing, you know, you really got that, that sense in that scene, particular scene that Iwao's actually been、yeah. here. You know, he's left a mark on that tree because he was here for you know, a considerable amount of time. Probably learning the iron paw move. <laughs> oh, actually. That is a reference to like、uh, Jamnen. I've been naughty. I'm going back. I like this scene that comes up in a minute. There's、okay. iron palm, isn't it? Yeah, iron palm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was、uh, some sort of. Subtle connection that maybe a wow taught that move to Jamin somehow <laughs> on his journey, and then Jamin teaches it to Rio, or vice versa. Maybe Jamin taught it to a wow, and then a wow was practicing on that、mm. second Shemu tree. We've got some we've got some answers here now, actually.、Uh, Renners is sitting on the fence. Uh, right, so life in Shenmu 3 is where Shenhua went into that room with the guy and scared the living shit out of him. <laughs> Good choice. That was a good scene.、Uh, Abdullah is saying Shemmy 1 where he holds his father when he dies. Yeah, that's a really good scene as well. Yeah. That's、um, quite poignant actually. It's, it's one of the more, sort of more standout ones. And I know, James, that's like. Sort of that opening sequence is one of your favourite bits of the whole series, in fact. It's just iconic, isn't it? It's,、mm. it's how we all discovered the game, the first thing you saw in the game, that opening five or ten minute cutscene. You know, stand to the test of time, really. When I think we, we could all kind of ここ word for word <laughs>、um, you know, say what the characters are going to say before they say it, kind of thing. That whole scene, we've seen it that many times. Ciao.、Um, Shemmy one is only tears in the park. Yep,、yeah, love that. Shemmy two saying goodbye to Zhuing. Yeah, again, that's excellent. Shemmy through the end of Bailu. Actually, Chow, you make a very good point with that because that cutscene shot very well and it, it, it's, it, it's in the same vein of the leaving scenes in Shenmue 1 when you leave, it, when you leave、um, the Buita and you look at the, sort of the leaving scenes when you leave Hong Kong, Kowloon, etc. in Shenmue 2. It's in those same sort of vein, it's really good. Actually, it's very well done. It's one of the better scenes in the game, actually. Quite retro Godfather cave scene from three. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one as well. Solid Mass four, four and five left. Yeah, I mean, 
Will we see beyond anything? Yeah, if we get Shenmue 4 and then hopefully Shenmue 5, would we see anything beyond that? I think it depends on the success of the overall franchise. I'd like to see a Shenmue 0 with maybe a WoW background a bit more. Maybe fill in some gaps in the story from Shenmue 4 and 5, depending on where it goes. Um, but yeah, so we could do, we could do those sort of things quite easily in the anime. Yeah, they can, absolutely. Any cut content, really, if you the budget or, you know, it's not that it's success, but he still wants to finish the game series off. He could tell, you know, all these little cut content, cut chapters and stuff. In the anime, if that's a success, it's you know it, it's going to be interesting to see where the Shenmue series actually goes over the next few years with the release of the anime, and then uh, obviously pitching Shenmue Four at the moment uh, to see if that that sticks and how you know what happens there. You know, maybe next E3. I think every time there's a, a game show, we're going to be watching on tenterhooks, really, aren't we? And, mm. <laughs> Especially after 2015, I don't. I, it's never going to ever beat that feeling. But you know, we're always going to be hopeful that we'll see something Chandler related at, at these events in the future. Runners, I hope they do a scene when the game ends. They so show a cut scene of Rio traveling back to Japan and saying final goodbye. I'd like to see that. I don't know if it will happen, nice but I, I'd like to see it. It'd be quite nice, just sort of to to round everything off, and he goes home. Um, yeah. I, I did always envision like Rio eventually getting back to, you know, Yokosuka and it just saying like, well done, you've completed the game, and then you're just free to roam. <laughs> That's what I, I always hoped. Mm. So you could just walk around the town oh. and, you know, the game's over kind of thing. I imagine like, uh, this is just me talking now because we talked on the subject of this, but imagine oh, like it lets you walk back Nihon through the Wii to obviously on PS5, oh. which is going to look amazing. Oh. And you're going back and people recognise the Rio's come, coming home oh. and they start, you know, start having those conversations with people and you, know, you see your friends from, from the first game and you start making your way through Yamanose, Sakura Joker and then back up to the dojo itself. I think that would be a really nice Honestly, moment. I, I think I, the way you're presenting that, I'd shed a tear. The closer you get back home, I'd what? be shedding a tear. Why is that? You know, those, those gates of the Hazuki <laughs> residence. <laughs> and, you know, Inisan there sweeping. <laughs> and, yeah, and they don't expect him to Imagine come home. That. And you they, Fuku san and Ine san just see him. And you know, she stops, you know, drops the broom. Yeah, if you think about it, everyone's going to be crying, aren't they, seeing Rio return? Mm. <laughs> That is uh, yes. the dojo, is it? It's the hospital. Isn't it? Why is Net need to need to hire us? I think we'll we'll, we'll direct that final cutscene. <laughs> but that would be, yeah, you know, it would. I think everyone would be shedding tears everywhere. Ren is holding both mirrors up high and then rehiding them in the. <laughs> I knew I'd heard this bit of music before. It's Niawu when you're on the um in the stalls. You know, there was a piece of music earlier when I was watching Brave Street. And it's the Bell, Bell Tower. Mm. We played it on the podcast last night and um, was playing just as oh god I, can't remember. I think it was as you were entering the cave and or, or... excuse me oh it was it was where um, it pans out from Rio standing on the cliff and you see the, the eagle flying past and stuff mm. that's the Bell Tower song that mm. you know you can listen to on Spotify it's weird that we've played the game so much and Hearing those songs again in Shenmue 3, I, I didn't make the connection there. I think you just so, you know, it sounds familiar when you're hearing it in the game. Right. I like this cutscene coming up actually in Shenmue 2. It's a very 80s kung fu movie sort of thing. Just hit the two hour mark, excellent. 
Don't worry, guys. I haven't forgotten about the t-shirt. I will be doing it very, very shortly. Just remember, if you want, when I do the entry, you have to enter exclamation mark raffle. It will tell you on the screen. Hopefully, it'll come up, and you'll have ten minutes to enter. Just so everybody's aware of that, and then I'll draw it. Right side of says, I had that when Rio jumped over the fence and one thing. They all get up to fight Rio in that team that plays there as a practice battle. Yeah. Right side of life. Um, I'm going to draw the t-shirt in a bit. And it's the same entry um, entry criteria as the, the Steam keys. Um, exclamation mark raffle. And it'll be open for 10 minutes. But I'll, it'll alert you in the chat when it's when it comes up. Wale. Yes, solid man, exactly. I'd like to see the Shenmue Zero WoW story. Um, but as, as, yeah, hopefully we might get some of that in the anime, as James has been saying. Because they've got a bit of a blank canvas with it. They can they can have their own... Not completely their own sort of twist on it, they can present things in a certain way. Strictly Save Europe is not open yet. Just, just wait. Yeah, exactly. I, I think... I know they are supposed to be retelling the story of Shenmue 1 and part of Shenmue 2 uh, in that first season, but like I say, I, I think there's an opportunity there to um, take, take it in different directions a little bit, mm. make some side, side stories with some of the, the characters, uh, and you know, make some more flashbacks at least with Rio and his father. I think it would be nice if the first episode takes place before, obviously, the introduction of Shenmue takes place as well, like seeing Ryo as a kid, mm. and uh, just introducing him and his relationship with his father, maybe Cooper-san's there, etc, and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, pretty nice. Do we think Ryo will take revenge? No. I don't think he will. I think he'll break the cycle of it. But I also think there'll be a moment in the game which is almost like a light bulb moment. Because you've got to think he's been very reckless this entire three games, which is what's set over about four to six months at the moment. So it's not very long in terms of like his development as a person. Even though he's been on this epic... There's ups and downs though, aren't there? Yeah. Like, just the bit before he finishes off Donu. He has that mind of a polished mirror moment where he closes his eyes. So he's, he's he's learning to be patient because obviously nothing's working at that stage to defeat that guy. <laughs> and uh, his teachings from Shun there allows him to, to defeat him basically. So he is learning and developing his character. Um, I feel like they took that away a little bit in Shun 3. He mm. kind of starts off a little bit more reckless again. But uh, like, like I say, he has his, his, his ups and downs throughout the, the series so far. Uh, oh, Nigel's just dropped in on the, I think it's on YouTube just to say hello and thanks to us for keeping up the Shenmue spirit. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Pre thanks, man. Appreciate thanks, appreciate the nice comments. Right, just so you're aware, everybody, the T-shirt draw is about to go live. Give me two seconds. <laughs> also, I hope Fuka Sandlin's to keep his mouth shut. Ah, 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 yes. Right, the T-shirt should now be live. It'll be popping up in the chat any second. There we are. It's in there. Get your entries in, everyone. Ten minutes. You should be able to do it on YouTube as well, by the way. Yeah, it's, I, I did see YouTube entries in the last one. Yeah. So, exclamation mark rapid. So, Salivan said... Uh, oh, I'm not sorry. I really read, read that one. Uh, right Side of Life says, I always said, I don't think there will be revenge if I didn't have any of it. Uh, they were so driven by revenge, but without recognising that Wild killed Landy's father, but Landy spared Rio several times. I suppose we've, we've still got that, that kind of story off to go into as well. Like, why is Landy saying that Rio's father killed his father, you know, and all these characters. That Rio's meeting the same like that doesn't sound that sounds out of character for a while. Yeah. The world would never kill. Kind of Retro Godfather and Strictly Sega Europe, just to let you know, even though the tickets haven't popped up in the chat that I can see, you're in the you're in the competition, I've just checked. Mm. Does the capital R make a difference? 
Um, I don't. I did, no, it didn't look like it did, but people that the YouTube guys are getting in the competition. I just wanted to double check it. So you are. If you're on YouTube, you are getting entered. Um, it's just not popping up in the chat for some reason. I'll have to fix that another day. People getting double entries by tearing <laughs> on both. It's up to them. <laughs> this is where everybody in the chat's got the t-shirt. Don't want it. Sealed view action. Yeah. Mm. It's, actually, it's a really nice t-shirt, that one, actually. It is. Renas, I think a wow did kill Landy's dad. It's an interesting thought, because they all say that a wow wasn't capable of murder. But what if it was an accident framed as murder by the Chi men, as we know that Landy was taken in by them and raised by them, and they framed it a certain way? Which is worth... Or, obviously, some, something to do with the mirrors, perhaps? You know, maybe... Mm. The consequence of Landy's father utilizing both mirrors. Maybe he killed him to get the mirrors and then, you know, he buried one and hid one so that they'd never be found. Yeah. 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 Looking at off. So I've yeah. I've seen people yeah. start following yeah. us as well yeah. on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. 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 sorry I've missed you guys, it hasn't popped up until just now, but um, Thank you for anyone who's dropped us a follow on Twitch or YouTube um, during the stream. We appreciate it. I didn't see that either. No, it didn't. It just popped up on my screen. I was like, oh, okay then. Thank you, everyone. Much appreciated as always. Uh, ah. says, looking at the scene, when Ilbao finds out who he was, he's cold towards him. Hmm. Oh, you. This scene, this this tree scene, it ends many a speed run. <laughs> but it is a nice scene, Des. I completely agree. I quite like the, uh, the way the oh, utilised the VMU. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, that was really clever. I love that. Excellent. How long on this rackle? Uh, end uh, it or does it auto end? It'll auto end, it'll pop up to say no more entries. I'd have a look. But I'm, um, I'm mid beating a tree. <laughs> Someone visits this tree in the future and there's a. Rio? Is that Rio? <laughs> <laughs> he wants the hand picked of the tree. Yes, he's Where are we both from? Uh, both from the United Kingdom, Renners. Yeah. <laughs> if you can tell how strong our accents are. <laughs> Yeah, get your get your entries in for the the draw, guys! Exclamation mark raffle! Get your entries in because there's probably only a few minutes left. I will check it if I get chance before it closes. Retro Godfather, I like it when the duck falls out of the tree. Yeah, <laughs> I like the duck's um, attitude. When he starts saying, they translate his um, quacking as I'm going to kick some ass. I like oh. that. It's quite funny. <laughs> Good attitude from the dog. Let me check the competition now. I've got a bit of breathing room. You have four minutes on the competition, everybody. Mmm, it's good. I I love this. 
just touch, just nudges it and the whole thing comes pouring down. That's very Kung Fu movie, isn't it? Yeah, especially with the delay as well. Mm. Ten, ten second delay can be in that. You've got to think about the cinematics in these two games, and even Shenmue 3 and the scenes we've talked about, there's some really good cinematic stuff here. And the way they shot things and put it together, it's really, yeah. really nice. Yeah, totally. Just as you say that, like, even the bloody 7 o'clock transition cutscenes nicely... It pans over, doesn't it? It, 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 looks, yeah, it looks really, really nice. Right. You know, I often think, like, I would have loved to see if the Dreamcast was a success, or even if Shenmue 2 was a success on the Xbox and they just continued the series at the time. Seeing how they would have made the Shenmue 3 in this Dreamcast engine, that would have been interesting to see in a different timeline. You know, different dimension. This Shenmue Three exists on the Dreamcast in a different dimension. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, it would. It'd be very, very interesting to see. I mean, I think they like take the Xbox like decision out of it, not put it on the PS2 out of it. I think they missed a trick by not putting Shenmue One on there as well. Yeah, because the movies are well and good, but I don't think it really sold it. They could, they could have. I, I don't know if there was a deal involved there, but they could have done a Shenmue One and Two collection back then really couldn't they yeah it would have made it would, would have made sense thrown, to wouldn't it thrown the original Shemu game on the disc because that's what people got out of the movie you know it's not like the graphics were improved in the movie so people could have played the first Shemu game and I bet a lot of people that picked up Shemu 2 didn't even bother with the movie I bet they just jumped straight into Shemu 2 and then they were a bit confused as to what was going on I've done it, it should have gone on PS2. I think it probably should have done. I I won I'm sure I read an interview a while back, like years ago, that they reckon it may have been difficult to pull over to it, but I, I don't I'd have to still sort of dig through the history on that one. Um, just so everybody knows the competition isn't far off closing for the T shirt, get your entries in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's interesting to um, I just think at the time Shamu had kind of killed Sega in terms of finances, and you know they were very reluctant to probably risk it, <laughs> risk spending more money on it. The time. I know Xbox had the deal because that was taking more or whatever. Just hope wanted to bring it to the Xbox console. Now that sort of deal with with Sega to get all those mm. um, those different Sega games on there. I don't know, I think it was because they wanted Shenmue to be that killer title to shift Dreamcast, that's why they did it. Yeah, like um, Final Fantasy. Yeah. Now, how many in the chat failed, well, say failed, got caught out by this QTE back in the day? Everyone did, haven't they? Yeah. The raffle's closed for the t-shirt, by the way. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think I watched the movie as well, and there's also a digest where you can it's, it's easy to go back and say, like, you know, this could have happened differently. The fact is, we are where we are now, and we've got to sort of keep going after Shenmue 4 now, aren't we? Yeah, I think that's the focus now, isn't it? We've, we've 
we've got the franchises back. Shenmue 1 and 2 are across modern platforms. Shenmue 3 is out on PC and PS4 and you can play it on PS5. It works and works really nicely as well. So we need what we need to be doing is, as a fan base is making sure we keep banging on that door for Shenmue 4. We don't let up. We don't rest on our laurels. We make that anime a success as well. And then, if that anime is a success, it just makes Shenmue 4 more viable. The market is wider. New people come on board. They might pick the games up. Then you can, then you can sell that and make those conversations easier with the publishers who might be interested and who you know for all we know could have even signed a deal now we don't know we don't know what we do know is Shenmue 4 is ready to be pitched in video and small playable areas Cedric Biscay interviewed the dojo don't forget it make sure you listen and also, Cedric, Cedric yeah, depends on how far along we are with the pitches and stuff they're not just going to suddenly announce it like that are they going to wait until there's a big stage, uh, you know, to be able to announce Shenmue 4. We don't know where we actually stand with the prospect of Shenmue 4, but I think it's good, at least that he's he's told us that they're pitching it to companies, hoping for a deal out of one of them, do you know what I mean? So that just proves that it's in a state. Um, you know, ちょっと<笑><笑> Yeah, I think that's just the audience, isn't it? I think people that play Fortnite. Right, I say you don't care or about Shenmue. Sanoshi plays it. Who plays it? Sanoshi. Oh yeah, she does, doesn't she? One of the staff does play it. I've never got into it. Renner's you say you don't care about Shenmue. I think they see more value in it than they used to. Because it's selling merchandise, for example, like these t-shirts and various other bits of merchandise set out pretty quickly and they did the, the hd port as well now so exactly you know you're talking there's a 20 year gap there of people that were involved with shemu 20 years ago there's different teams now you've got the the sega europe team that kind of helped to, to bring the hd collection out and you know none of them i don't think were around when shemu one was first released working for Sega. i mean Mm. So you've got you've got different staff members with the ability to say you know let's let's market this let's push for this you know it is a different Sega at the moment especially the way they're going even in you know Sega Japan bringing back all these classic IPs that was part of the I don't know if they announced that on Sega Fest or whatever where they were saying that we're gonna you know, a lot, a lot of the fans really care about old IPs, and that's something they, they kind of want to do. Obviously, Shenmue's part of that. Yeah, very, very, very much so. And I think they're starting to realise the value in their older IPs now. Um, Sega, probably even ten years ago, I don't think they were ever, they wouldn't have been interested in very much else, even in their old old school catalogue. But now you look, um, you look, you've obviously got um, Shenmue Eight, One and Two HD. You've got uh, the, the Panzer Dragon remake. You've got Streets of Rage Four. So there's there's plenty out there for for, um, for old school Sega fans now, and it's good to see. You also got things Sonic Mania. Yeah, Streets of Rage Four. You know, the back of the, they've been successful. <laughs> Renners, yeah, true, true again, Cobra Kai, Netflix, martial arts kind of coming back into uh, the mainstream audience. It, and it could help the anime, it could easily help the anime in that respect as well. If they tout it as like a martial arts epic, mm. I think that was something, uh, was it Ebbs, you know, Sega Europe's social media guy, he, he was saying, or, or someone was saying that they didn't, they never know how to market Shenmue, they don't know whether to, to say like, uh, it's a martial arts epic, or use the success of Yakuza and say, you know, it's it's similar to Yakuza, it's the game that 
came before Yakuza kind of thing, how, how do they market for, for the best? I think they, they don't really know how to market, market Shenmue to appeal to a wider audience. So it, it, it's, it's difficult really. I mean, obviously, the communities, Shenmue Freda, Salves, all the different communities on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. We're helping to push push Shemu in front of new audiences. That's you know seeing people pick up games for the first time. And that's the thing, isn't it? We've just part of what we're doing is as is, is the wider community groups, and it's not just the dojo. It's, you've got Shenmue Forever on on Twitter. You've got Phantom of Stone. You've got Shenmue Master. Um, you've got Shenmue D. I'm probably missing people. Um, but there's there's plenty of community groups out there that. That um, are doing this, they are pushing the Shemu 500k is another one. Um, you've got two new community groups just popped up recently Shemu Japan and Shenmu AU, which is Shenmu fan group in Australia. So we've had two new fan groups pop up as well. So things are moving nicely. And if we all come together and keep banging on that, banging on that door, then it'll happen. But we can't let up. That's the biggest thing. We can't let up. I was just going to say to that Ectoplasm guy, I think he's gone because I can't find him. Ah, okay. Uh, just to, to hop into the YouTube, because you can you can alter the quality there, I don't understand why you can't on Twitch, but you can on YouTube because I'm, I'm checking. I also think Shenmue, Shenmue is, oh he's just popped up actually, better on YouTube, yeah. Oh yeah, so cool. better on YouTube, yeah. There you go. Um. I also think, like, you look at open world games these days. I don't worry, I haven't thought about the t-shirt. I will, I will do the winner in a bit. Um, you look at open world games these days, they're massive, sprawling open worlds, aren't they? They're humongous. Whereas I think a game like Shenmue 4, if it expanded... Large. Yeah, if it expanded inwards and had some really good detailed content in a smaller area, you could catch on that yep. way. Because you could, you could turn around and go, yes, this game's got a massive 60-hour open world, but I can offer you 30 to 40 hours of real top-notch, varied quality content. And it's an interesting conversation to have, actually, because I think games are, are, are humongous these days, some of these open world games. I mean, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla at the moment, and I'm yeah, probably, probably 30 hours in. And I have no idea how far through the story I am. Touch the surface, yeah. I was the same with whatever one was before Val uh, Valhalla. Is it Odyssey? Odyssey. Is it? Odyssey's um, massive. I think I'm still still in the first sort of tiny area, hmm. and I must have played like twenty odd hours or something. And it gets very repetitive very quickly. I much prefer, and this is probably just showing my age here, but the the very first Assassin's Creed, where it was like more of a linear storyline. A nice 13 solid story driven Assassin's Creed game. Whereas the new ones are like just following that. They're almost like a, an MMO but without the online aspect. Mm. You know, you're just on your own and you've got this massive 100 plus hour open world, which I suppose for, for kids that have got the time to play those games, then you know, I'd, I'd have probably lapped it up if, when I was at high school and coming home. And, you know, that's all you do for the rest of the evening. It's just playing games. I'd have probably lapped up a game like that back in the day, but coming from my point of view with a full time job and all the stuff we have to do for the, the dojo and that sort of stuff. Right I side have to, to play the new Assassin's Creed games. Right side of life's put that you know put I think summed it up quite well. It's it's how dense the maps are in Shenmue. They're not massive and you're right, they're not massive. But they're very well packed and populated and there's a lot to do in them, and I think with Shenmue 4, if they really you know, go into that, you know, expanding that density a bit more, the world doesn't have to be massive. As long as it's got the content and the story, I think we're golden. Mm. Right, I'm going to draw the t-shirt. It depends what you, Suzuki, and the team actually want. Do they want, is that what they envision? Mm. A massive open world, you know, like Shenmue 2 scale is probably perfect for me. Uh, it's just big enough that it keeps everything interesting throughout the, you know, as, as soon as you got used to Hong Kong, they threw you into Kowloon. Abdullah Asif has won one of these. Oh, well done, man. It's extra large. Um, if you drop us a message on our Twitter, and I have a surprise. I have a surprise. Bear with me a second. For Abdullah? <laughs> if 
you if you're really skinny, by the way, Abdul, you can wear that as a knight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was a bit bit naughty, and, uh, and I have a, a second one. <laughs> okay. Um, it's in medium this time. Uh, it's all I could get, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, so I'm going to quickly set it up. You'll have ten minutes. Same entry criteria as before. Oh, nice. So here you go, guys. This is a, a nice prize. And between yourselves, Abdullah and um, whoever wins the next one, if you want to arrange <laughs> a size lies, swap, let us yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let us know. Right, we're going to start it again. Ten minutes, everyone. The second T-shirt is now live. And I'm going to play some lucky hit while we do it. I'm going to try and play some lucky hit while we do it. I want to play some lucky hit, damn it. Yeah, the perfect. Spot on there. I think a fun 10 to 20 hour game beats a boring 6 hour game anytime. Mm. That's the thing with these, I mean, even like the latest Assassin's Creed game, probably the first 10 to 20 hours are fun, but then it's just unnecessarily long and you just grow tired of it. And I think there was a stat, I'm not sure where I heard it, whether it was on Easy Hearts podcast or something, but there's a stat that's like something really incredible, like only 5% of people actually finish games these days. I think that's just a testament to like because how so these games are. so damned large. And do you yeah, guys... exactly. And it's like, with all due respect, we're all, yeah, we're adults here, we work, we have lives, some of us will have kids or whatever. Do we have the time to be going through a 60-hour epic? Oh, for God's sake, come on! <laughs> Could come and die yeah. Yeah, well that's the thing, I mean, again, sharing my age probably, but I prefer more arcade sort of uh, experiences, like yes. we had the, the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn, where arcade games are like, you know, ported over to those consoles, and in fact I've probably played games like Crazy Taxi more by keep coming back to it, and replaying it, and replaying it, and replaying it, just because it's such a fun game to play. I've probably put more hours into Crazy Taxi than these 100 hour epics, if that makes sense. I and, love it. Uh, yeah, see you later, ciao. Thanks see you, for, ciao. Take care, around. man. Especially for two hours, that's cool. Take care, man. Ma! Konna koto mo aru sa! Shoubu wa kore kara kore kara! Yaru yo na! Play. I'm not yeah, accepting yeah. defeat just yet. Yes, Koreda. Come on! I don't think any of us can fit in that medium at the moment after Christmas. Oh, bloody struggle. I ate so much food at Christmas, it's ridiculous. Ah, uh, that's cool. Ab Abdullah says when he got his kickstart of Coffee of Shaman 3, he must admit he played it all one go non stop. Really? Through an egg. But that, that's quite good because Shemi 3 is quite a long game. Yeah, it's because a good... of the grinding and stuff. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's probably about thirty hours. Like when you play it on the first go. I've just seen that right. Has Abdullah won the second ship as well? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He won the first one. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought that was Steam Lab saying that. It's right side of life. <laughs> yeah, I had a panic then. I was like, what? No, I haven't drawn it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, thank you, Right Side of Life. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just read the message, I was thinking, what? Lucky hit! <laughs> yeah, don't forget, guys, get your entries in, because there's probably about five minutes on it. Good stuff for these prizes, man. I have to... Uh... To send you some money, <laughs> how much you paid for it. I did quite well on them actually. Um, okay, that's good. I have to yeah, sort them out, but it's all good fun. Why the hell not? It's a special stream. Sod it. Yeah, we don't do this very often, guys. No. The, uh, there's a regular guy that streams for the dojo called Zakuriel, whatever. 
and uh, you find him every. He, he does stream normally every Saturday. He's just happens to be his day off. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been streaming a lot for us, and he's he wanted a day off, and we were like, well, yeah, why not? And he normally streams a bit earlier in the day. It's normally about four p.m. Uh, UK time, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but with like Renner's knows him well anyway, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, Ren I yeah. see Renner's name in there. Yeah, I always see his name in there, to be fair. <laughs> Retro Godfather, I haven't stopped yeah. playing Shenmue 3 since launch and haven't 100%ed it. There's definitely not yeah. replay value in there. I'd agree. Um, <laughs> the blooming thousand fish, though. I, I, I swear, I swear my, I, I, I want to cry at that one. Um, <laughs> But actually, I haven't even attempted well, to. No, I, mean, I would like to though. I'd like to go back and collect all the achievements and stuff. The, the fishing, I the, don't know why I the fishing itself is actually good fun. I quite like the fishing. I find it quite therapeutic. Well, it's not as addictive as the it's wood very chopping. Much Sega bass fishing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I miss the Ren quest. Runners, yeah, yeah. That's a great, great lad. To be fair to him. Um, yeah, yeah, works so hard on our streams and um, and yeah, he streams got you know ungodly hours as well sometimes. Can you sell the fish in Shenmue three or eat it? It's just selling it. <laughs> right, so I reckon up to three hundred six hundred fish. Well played, well done. Because I tell you what, that's a lot of work. I'm gonna go play some darts. So you can you can sell the fish, can't you? Yeah, you just say you can't eat them. I think. You, yeah, you, you, I think you have to sell them. I think it pulls you into that cutscene, doesn't it, to sell them? Yeah, at the end it pops up and you get them. So, at least you're still generating money, I suppose. Yes, that's true, it does that's count good, That's a good, good, good thing about... Yeah, good thing about uh, Shenmue 3 is that once you complete the game, you can restart the New Game Plus kind of thing, can't you? Keep, keep all your money and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Getting all the herbs, man. On on Niawu, it, it took me forever. I got to the last two or three, and I couldn't find them for love nor money. And you sort of just stumble across them randomly. And you, but you don't know how many you've got left. You're like, what? That's true, yeah. And you don't know if you've missed any in Bailu at mm. the time. So on the achievement, that's a tricky one. That that'd be useful. The the map that they've included with the complete collector's edition, whatever the, the Bailu yeah. and herb map. Do you get a lot of money the, for the fish? The, no. It depends on how many you sell, is the honest answer, and their weight. Oh shit. Yeah, the weight of them. Uh, well, that was poor. It's worth trying it, to be honest, Abdul, if you haven't. Because it's, it's such a fun uh, mini game. If you've ever played, like I was saying, Sega Bass Fishing on the Dreamcast, it's, it's virtually a Sega Bass Fishing clone mm. in Shenmue. Best to search, yeah, it is best to search at night because you can get the, the red ring pops up around it, so it's a bit easier to see the bloody things. Yeah. Oh, shh. Not having a good game here. I'm not even going to clear the first level. Last that is poor. I'm getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> The retro god uh, that, says it's it's nice to see that he hasn't stopped playing Shenmue 3 since launch and he still hasn't 100%ed it. Yes. So there's, you know, there's a definitely a lot of replay value. Mm. Very, very much so. And the mini games are great. Yeah, I wish Darts was in Shenmue 3 actually. The music's in one of the shops somewhere, isn't it? It's in. Um, is it in Bailu? It is in Bailu where the, the guy with the crazy stories is. It's like a little restaurant there. Yeah, that's it. That second, mazu, mazu second, um, second location where he's got the turtle racing, mm. or the frog frog racing, and uh, that one. Just past the fortune teller. Easy. That's another thing, really. You know, a lot of the music we used was used a bit. <laughs> some unusual pieces were used in places. I don't mm. know. They were. Like the darts music. Kind of didn't make sense, but there's some really and, good uh, bits. I, in I there. always thought it was weird some of the cutscenes, and then uh, having that the golden quarter music playing in the background, <laughs> or Queen Street or whatever. 最後の一本. 
The entry to Niao is really good though, I think. Either. Yeah. Well, that's true as well, like a uh, retro club probably says quite some of the outfits as well. Mm. There's a lot of replay value there for prizes and um Just apologise if anybody had a bit of flicker on the screen just then. My other monitor to turn itself off. Let's turn it back on. Either. Well, at least this is a better darts run than last time. Check. Oh, okay, we've got two message requests. Excellent. Got the second t-shirt competition is now closed. And I'm going to draw... I will draw the t-shirt in a bit. Might play one more arcade game, draw the t-shirt, then I'll be bringing us to a close. We've been going so for just two and a half hours. Match. Yeah, just to confirm, we've got two uh, messages on the dojo Twitter. And uh, one of them is the bright side of life guy. Mm -hmm. Imperative survival. Has he won, won a steam key? Is that right? Sounds right, I'd check it. Yep. Peter Wilson. Uh, that, that yeah, Peter Wilson key. got one, yeah. Anybody oh. who hasn't messaged us, make sure you do so to get your stuff, be it steam key or the t shirt. Or Cena. Yeah. So, so far, we've had two out of four with the steam keys. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dollar, if you can send us a, a DM on Twitter, if you've got Twitter. Don't know if you can confirm in the chat. Mad, the mad, the mad. Sort your t shirt out. Sure, Obviously he does. I'm sure I've seen Abdullah comment on stuff. Yeah, well, before. I, I, the, the two that I've just had there were sent as message requests, so I had to accept them. Mm, okay. Well, obviously that just that proves that we've got DMs turned on, whatever, so Either. send us a DM, the remaining people. And uh, I'll leave that to you, Matt, to... Yeah, I'll I'll sort, I will sort people. those out um, when we've um, finished up. I'll certainly get the Steam Keys we'll out that. today, because I've got them ready. Yeah. Renners, if you don't <laughs> message for your stuff, it's <laughs> mine. <laughs> Let's get two t-shirts, two keys. <laughs> right, one more arcade game then I will do this one. Uh, Retro Godfather also loved filling up the Shemu Shrine with all the classic no Shemu characters by getting all the red crates yeah. in the boat and placing them in the warehouse. Yeah, I did. That was good fun, actually. What do I want to play? What do I want to play? What do I want to play? I'm going out, run. I love Outrun. I still need to play the Astro City Mini I just got. I want to play properly, play Space Harrier with the arcade stick. Uh, oh, Abdul, you did on. I remember you messaged us on Twitter. The Deep Silver event stuff. Um, they were on oh, holiday yeah, saw, and saw it, was that, it was affected by COVID. So it will, I'll tell you what we'll do. I will drop um, Sylvia, who, who's organising that for us, a message. Um, that gin ginger fairy, hello, how's it going? Um, you're sort of catching the last sort of 10 15 minutes of us, but nice to see you. Okay, yeah, I can see the message from Abdullah from the first first time, so beautiful. Yeah, don't worry, you don't, have, you don't have to message us, we'll just send you a t shirt. Yeah, we've got it, super. At the moment, at the moment you're getting the XL. I don't know if you confirmed if that's a good size for you. But whoever might win the medium, if you if you guys spoke to each other, want to do a swap, just yeah, you know, let us know, and we we can possibly look at that. I just got a message from you. Oh, Shame World's back in again. Oh yeah. Ah, you watch you. Ah, I, I thought I'd seen you in Corey's streams, Ginger Fair. I thought I'd seen you knocking around in there. I recognised your name. Yeah, good yeah, Shen, good night, Shen World, all good. Not far off finishing what, up for the night, I think. Yes, you have sound for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I think, like, me and James doing these streams, we sort of, like, every couple of months, I reckon, at a push. Depending on how things go, yeah, whether they're special events. Packed. You can expect this, Shit. Um, 
we did, we've mentioned this a couple of times now, but if, if, you, if you didn't hear, we're doing a podcast, uh, Shemi Dojo podcast, research, you can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. But wherever you get podcasts from, it should be there. Just search for the Shemi Dojo show, and we're, we're planning to do a podcast once per month. Yeah. And obviously Matt's doing loads of little interviews in, in, in between those months. That'll be on the feed as well, and also on YouTube. And then, like you said, just said there, we'll try and do a stream every couple of months, just to keep the content going, basically. Yeah, and but don't forget, we we have our regular resident streamer Zaturio who does them every every Saturday, 4 p.m. UK time. Yep. So do drop him and say hello. Uh, we so there's always some good Shemu content. <laughs> we we pop into the chat now and again, don't we, as well, just to say hello. Of course, yeah. And don't forget, if you're not on our forums, you don't follow us on social media. We have a Twitter account. Everything's going around the bottom of the screen right now. So make sure you pick us up and follow us and join the forums. Where there's plenty of Shenmue discussion, history, and loads of other content. Don't forget to drop in on there as well. If you're ever bored, especially if you're in this lockdown board and you want to, to chat Shenmue, just go on the Dojo forums and there's mountains of... Uh... Yes, yeah, and our media so, section's huge. If you want Shenmue content in the media section, I don't know. I made this section actually. Here. Got away with this. Ah, that's it. It's game over. He spun it out. Not uh, so just, I'll just mention this. Uh, Abdullah says. Uh, whoever wins the medium one, if the are extra large, want to swap. So yeah, cool, cool. The options there. Just yeah, just if you want to sort it out amongst yourselves and then let us know, and we can make sure that goes goes to the relevant person. Um, I'll try and get them sent out sort of probably middle next week. We'll go do the draw for the medium, which I will be doing very shortly. For closing us off for the night. Oh, he's crashed, it's game over. And just a quick update if anyone's backed Shenmue World magazine. I've got the test copy here. Uh, things are moving quite well on that. Um, I've ordered the packaging, the CDs, uh, we're still waiting on a few things. Eric Calso sent the signed prints. Yeah, so I'm waiting on that to go. But hopefully within the next couple of weeks, um, we should basically should have everything. I'll start getting these shipped out to you as well. I've got a test copy here as well behind me, and I tell you what, guys, you're in for a treat. Bloody brilliant. I'm looking forward to seeing people's reactions, man. Yeah, anyone wants to do a reaction video on it? I'm a little bit like... You know, it's, it's when you're your own creator or something. It's like, is it is it good enough? Like, I, I, I hope people enjoy the content. I hope people enjoy. I just think think it's going to be really cool, especially once the whole it's it's like a complete package with the Rio X's CD as well. It should be pretty cool. When will it be coming out, James? What question in the in the chat just before I do the T-shirt? Uh, well, it depends what you mean. If you've already backed it, then uh, I'm shipping them probably in about two weeks' time, two or three weeks' time. Uh, I did put an estimated delivery date of February, so I'm, that's basically what I'm going to aim for, as long as they're all delivered by February. That includes the whole of the month, <laughs> just in <laughs> case there's any more delays. It's, just, it's been a bit of a, a thing, with obviously, with Christmas and the New Year, and obviously the new lockdown and Brexit and all that sort of stuff. A lot of these companies have, have been a bit slower to respond mm. to me and a bit, it's a bit more difficult to, to place these large orders. But um, yeah, hopefully within the next few weeks I'll be able to get all these together and start the shipping process, which is going to be quite tricky to be honest in itself really because we've got, I think it was roughly, we calculated about 600 backers. A lot of people. And so I've got to manually. It's, it's a lot of people to worry about. Yeah, I've got to manually. Don't forget, I've got to manually print everyone's address and package everything. So just think of that on that scale. Realistically, I can probably do fifty a night, maybe. So 
it could take a week or so just to to completely send them all out. Uh, but obviously, if on my days off, I'll I'll really invest my time in making sure that everything gets sent off properly. Right. I'm going to um, crack this T-shirt up. Oh, sorry. Right. And then Ooh, we'll field. Oh, Ferry was a sponsor magazine. Thank you. That's we'll cool. field a couple more questions in the chat, and then I will bring us close. Right. So the winner is Peter Wilson over on YouTube. I should be Very pop good. In, popping up any moment now in the chat. Um, I don't know what it hasn't yet, but it's definitely Peter Wilson. I've seen it. So if you drop us a um, DM on Twitter, um, any other... Peter Wilson thingy as well, that's cool. If we can see if we've missed any other questions in the chat very quickly. Uh, can we buy the magazines I've missed out on the Kickstarter? We don't really know yet, but um, James, do you want to talk about that quickly? Well... If you if you if you're interested, Abdullah, I mean, um, I am still semi-offering. It's 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 getting a, getting more difficult to take like late orders and stuff. But yeah, if you if um, you can contact the the dojo on Twitter there, and um, uh, I can I can sort you sort you a copy out definitely. Oh, Peter's saying to Abdullah, do you want to choose choose a size very quickly? And then you can have the other one. So we'll just hang on a second because I don't want to. So what would what would you prefer, Peter? Would you prefer the XL or the medium? Because uh, Abdullah is happy to swap. Just see if he's... I will keep walking around. He's very lucky at the moment. There's a, there's a lot of Shemu stuff to come, like like Ginger Fairy has mentioned there. He's waiting on the Shemu two vinyls. Oh yeah, of course. This. Forgot, about, forgot about that. We've got the limited run, limited run vinyls. We've got the limited run collector's edition. Peter Every happy. One. Peter's happy either way. Okay. So Abdullah, if you wanna. Was that on YouTube? Sorry. Yeah, if you wanna Abdullah, if you wanna choose which T-shirt you want. Um, it just if you can either let us know on Twitter or if you're seeing it in the chat now, um, let us know and I'll sort that out. I'll make a note of it. Looking don't don't us. worry, runners. We're, 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 when we come back in a couple of months, we'll we'll have some more stuff to probably give away. I'm sure. Uh, I'm just gonna write this down. T-shirt. Yeah, I can appreciate that, Ginger uh, Fairy. I know what it's like. Abdullah, just in case. Yeah. Uh, so he'd rather I'd have a medium. medium one, right, so that's fine. I'll get that written down. Abdullah, and then XL. No, um, Shem will. I put that to that mat. <laughs> Type in his Shemu Dojo. No, it's me. It's me. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw us to a close there. We are nearly three hours into the stream, everyone. Um, I just want to say a thank you to everyone who's come into the chat today and taken part in the conversations, discussions over the last sort of three hours. We we really appreciate you taking the time and effort to just drop in, say hello, and engage with us. Um, well done to all the competition winners. Um, we'll be sorting out your bits and pieces shortly. I will get the Steam codes out that I can tonight so that those who've got them, you who know, won those can get them. If you haven't messaged us already on Twitter, please do it as soon as possible um, because I need to get the reward, the, the competition prizes out. Otherwise, yeah, I'd want to thank... Just a couple of Steam people that cool. haven't. Cool. Um, I also want to thank James for joining me tonight and helping me a sort all the prizes out and b just give us a nice nice bit of chat and all the rest of everything you do it's good to have have us both yeah, here course, i think man. um and the other thing is say yeah. thank you so much everybody um we'll be back in a couple of months probably join us every saturday with zaturio because he streams at 4 p.m on a saturday gmt for everybody who's who's interested don't forget to join our forums social media where we've got interviews media um podcast as well we've got a lot of things going on at the moment plenty of shenmue content and we will see you all again very very soon good night everybody have a good one thanks everyone for coming Nade
て通り過ぎる海へ、つながるほどの潮の香り、運ぶよ、愛しさが優しい。Cool.